Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the Milton Planning Board uh, meeting of October 22nd, 2015. My name is Emily Ennis. I'm the chair. I'll ask the other members to introduce themselves. Alex Whiteside, a member. William Clark, planning director. Julia Gettman Clark. Tim Serwinski, assistant town planner. Frank Burrs, member. Cheryl Tagayas, member. We're just waiting on one other member who's running a little bit late, Mike Kelly. Let me run through the um, items for today. Uh, we have approval of past minutes, which we are going to be doing on Monday before town meeting. So our next meeting will be at 7 o'clock uh, next Monday, October 26, and then town meeting starts at 7.30. The other item on our agenda for that will be to do the final vote accepting the Warrant Committee's uh, recommendations before we go into town meeting. Other than that, our meet next meeting would be November 12th. I understand there's at least one conflict, um, so we'll be discussing uh, that at a later point this meeting um, because we also have to discuss the fact that currently we're scheduled for Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve, so just keep that in mind. Um, citizen Speak is the next item on our agenda. Yes? Quickly, could the, uh, the plan of the agency send out the batch minutes I believe there's a plan for the batch minutes to go out. Is that uh, you had requested? Julia, would you send that email you sent me to everyone? I sent them to you. You sent them to me, did you? But I didn't send them to everybody. I thought you'd look at them first. Right. You, but you sent one to Alex. You sent me all the unapproved minutes. And the yeah. ones I, the one I had didn't have the June minutes. So, so send. The one you Alex to have the June minutes? No. Okay. No. I, I, I forwarded the emails to you. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So then everybody should get that for Monday, make sure you look at it because we'd like to pick them off. Um, so Citizen Speak, you're very welcome. Citizen Speak will be the next item on the agenda. Uh, we have one public hearing for tonight. That is the definitive subdivision plan for 3341 Pleasant Street. That will start at 7.15. If you're wanting to comment on that, please uh, hold your comments for that public hearing, not for the Citizen Speak. The other uh, items on our agenda are uh, the continued discussion and deliberation of conditions by the planning board for Thayer Nursery. That's a special permit and site plan approval. Um, the planning board also has for discussion two zoning articles. It says for October town meeting, but these are really, uh, oh, sorry, those are the zoning articles for October town meeting. The, the colon in there is wrong. Um, non, we're also going to potentially be talking about non-conforming buildings or lots or both. That was a question that came up on that particular bylaw. And then the general bylaw for noise. So, and then any other business after that. So as it's not, uh, let's do citizens speak first and then if we have any time remaining we will go forward with a d report from the planning director. Um, do we have any citizens who wish to speak? Yes sir, please come forward. My name is Phil Johanny. I live at 22 Parker Drive in Milton. Um, my comments regard uh, what I perceive to be inconsistencies in the way uh, the public hearings were uh, conducted, um, let's say for 333 Brushel Road, where the public hearing was closed, yet the board continued to hear from members of the public. And I thought, I, I didn't understand that, and I thought it was inconsistent and maybe potentially unfair to others who might be in the same situation. Additionally, I wanted to mention uh, peer review. Uh, I noted that in 333 Brush Hill Road, um, peer review was provided to the abutters by the um, applicant. And I was curious about um, why peer review would be a common practice, why the applicant would typically not uh, provide peer review I, I think uh, it would be really important to be consistent and fair to all abutters and to all applicants. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I will answer you in a minute, Mr. Joe Henning. I just want to make sure, is there anybody else who wishes to speak for citizen speech? All right. So in that case, Mr. Joe Henning, um, your first question on the inconsistencies, uh, as you call them, for the uh, between 333 Brush Hill Road and I'm assuming you're referring to Thayer as the other one. 333 Brush Hill Road is actually not the same type of application as, um, uh, as some of the others we received. It is a site plan approval. And in the period between uh, when the board had closed its public hearing and when we were going to uh, vote on, our, on the draft um, 
uh, site plan approval. If you remember, Alex was working on the draft. Uh, and we had a meeting in between in which a number of residents came forward to citizens speak. And they said, we didn't know this was happening until suddenly somebody arrived on our property and on what we believe to be the town's property and started construction. And these are people who had not had the chance to speak in front of the person who had made the application and to listen to that. So um, we had them do a special citizen speak right before our deliberation so they would have a chance to make their complaints known to the person who had started that started work actually in advance of us actually granting a site plan approval. Um, the other major uh, public hearing that we've been having recently has of course been Thayer Nursery which is a site plan approval and special permit and that has been actually a series of two public hearings one which started roughly this time a little bit later last year I don't remember the exact date and one uh, ended in March when we had the um, uh, solar panels fall off the roof of Town Hall and then a second public hearing started up and has continued until just a few weeks ago. At that, the public and the abutters have had every opportunity to speak in front of the applicant and in front of the board and give their points. So in those two respects, one did not have the ability to do that because they didn't actually know what was going on until somebody showed up and said, you know, started work. And in the other, everybody has had the opportunity to speak. So really, it was granting an unusual circumstance for the public to be able to be heard on 333 Brush Hill Road. On the second, on the peer review, um, I note uh, that Mr. Joe Henning mentioned that a peer review was provided to abutters at 333 Brush Hill Road. I just want to clarify that any reviews that are done, whether it's by the town engineer or by a peer review, are provided to the planning board. Uh, the purpose of a public hearing uh, for any of these, whether it's site plan approval or special permit or scenic road, the purpose of the public hearing is for the planning board to gather all information, including information from members of the public, which include abutters, as well as from the applicant and then any peer reviews. Uh, in some circumstances, we have requested a, a peer review be done. In some circumstances, we've had the town engineer do the peer review. Whether or not we have a peer review has often depended on how busy the town engineer is. And so in certain circumstances, we requested an outside peer review because town engineer simply doesn't have the capacity to do it. So those are my two answers on that. I see we have about five more minutes before the public hearing starts. Bill, would you like to give a quick report as to what you've been up to? I don't think we've had a report recently. Sure. Um, this board has actually approved a couple of subdivision, uh, definitive subdivisions in the, in, the, in the short past. One was Mary Webster Lane, the other was uh, Beachwood. Um, I've been going through the decisions and now have to go back and deal with the developers on the issues that are outstanding within the uh, decisions. Uh, some of it goes back to the planning board, some of it goes back to the engineering department. Um, I've had the discussion with the engineers in town and we now have to go back and see if we get these things rectified before winter sets in. Um, the special permit for uh, Woodmere, the St. Pius site. Um, I've been going through the construction plans with their, uh, their project engineer. Um, I went through the the clearing, the trees, the tree plans, the drainage plans, the uh, engineering plans for the water and sewer connections to the street. I've been meeting with them several times out there. Wanted to look at the, the specific trees that have been saved, the specific trees that uh, they tried to save, but they lost one. Um, it was already rotted out. Uh, been going through the issue of the but was there a leaning tree that they 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 stacked a lot of wood up against so that it was it was uh, going it was at already, a forty five degree angle? It was that's the way it was going to be preserved. It is all, it was already leaning and they did remove those things the next day. Um, they're not up against it and there is an orange fence around those two trees. And did they pull it to an upright position? They can't again? do that. They can't well, do that. But it's maybe an oak they're tree going to have will, to replace it. They may have to in time. Um, they did lose one of the big oak trees that they thought they were going to save, but when they went to do pruning on it, when they went in and grabbed the tree, the top of it fell off, so it 
came down. Um, the Dupree House, the mansion that's on site, when they bought the property, they had just taken out the oil tank. There has been an oil spill under the underground tank. So before they get too far with new construction sites, they're making sure they remove all of the fill up around where that tank is. Um, that should take about another week. Um, they have an LSP on site every day to figure out how far, how deep, next steps. Uh, they've been in touch with DEP every day with it. Um, the roadway is pretty much almost completely laid out, packed gravel-wise. <laughs> Uh, two of the foundation holes are dug. The drainage holes are dug. Uh, they'll be filing for all of those permits uh, early to mid next week. Um, the site itself is a giant bowl, so anything that happens, everything stays inside. So it's a nice place to have to work if you're worried about erosion. Um, the trees have been taken down according to the plan. And move on to the 333 Brush Hill, which had the same issue with trees. Um, the construction management review, I was out there with the developer and his site person, um, marking trees, continually looking at you know better ways to save other trees. Um, they already started some of their ground clearing. They're getting ready to put in their drainage system. Um, they've laid out where the road goes, and they are trying to find the optimum way to put the utilities in. Um, dealing with the East Milton parking, uh, meeting with the, with the Chamber of Commerce, meeting with Mass Highway, meeting with uh, Howard Sign Hudson. Um, that's an ongoing process. Uh, Governor Stoughton property. The, I met with the people from Pulte trying to get them to move along on their application to this board. And they are, they hired a new engineer uh, because of the complexities that the site offers. Um, that engineer has been out every day last week and I know that he's been out Monday and Tuesday um, of this week on site doing more measuring, shooting lines and doing the rest. So they're shooting for November to file an application with this board. They should be encouraged to hire a landscape architect. They did. Okay, good. They did. Uh, and then I've been doing the stuff for Eulen Rink trying to get the 25-year lease for the selectmen. Sounds fairly busy. Thank you very much. And that brings us to 7.15. So we are going to start the public hearing on the definitive subdivision plan for 33 to 41 Pleasant Street. We're going to read the rules for the public hearing. So we're going to have, uh, because this is the, the opening, we're going to have an introduction from staff, in this case, Tim. Um, the applicant will make a presentation. We've uh, heard it before, but not in this uh, as far as uh, an initial presentation, but not as part of this public hearing. I'll allow questions from board members at that point. We'll take any testimony from members of the public, and then we'll identify outstanding items for the next meeting. When we get to the point where we take testimony from members of the public, I will read the rules for that. So, Tim, do you want to give us a quick synopsis? Uh, sure. Um, Bill and myself conducted a, a technical review on documents um, provided by uh, the applicant. Um, a lot of just sort of housekeeping type things for cleaning up the plans and getting them ready, um, which um, you should all have plans. I've got a big copy over here for when we eventually get started. You can take a look at that. Um, a few of the things that are, I don't want to say outstanding, but I, I, would, I would flag for, for your uh, consideration is um, the issue with, with Lot 9 and the, the frontage for that or the, the potential frontage for that. Um, there's a, there was a frontage question on lot four um, regarding the, uh, the, the zoning bylaws definition of, of frontage, 80% um, of 75%. Um, so that's something to take a look at. Um, and, and I would just um, 
there's been um, the applicant has been before the Conservation Commission um, regarding a utility easement through the um, hundred foot buffer um, of the vernal pool towards the rear of the site um, and also has been in contact with the Melton Historic Commission um, regarding uh, the two existing houses on the site um, I, I don't want to put words in the applicant's mouth but you know they can um, they, they can let you know about that um, it just came in today. You should all have in your in, in front of you a, a memo from the town engineer, um, who had a chance to look at these and, and provide some initial <coughs> comments. Um, and uh, unless Bill has anything else, Bill, anything else? All right. In that case, welcome. David, uh, my name is Paul Sullivan, uh, Smith Road, Milton. Uh, I'm here with the app. Rob Celebrity. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding, uh, I'll just quickly go over the uh, Milton Historic Commission. Uh, I just heard from Steve O'Donnell and on the second house, uh, 33 Pleasant Street, and, and it's all set. They are uh, not seeking to preserve either one of the homes. Okay. So that's behind us. Regarding the easement and uh, the conservation, they uh, prepared to issue an order condition. They voted on a site walk to uh, to approve it, and uh, so that's moving forward. Uh, back to the uh, the subdivision itself and the site. Uh, it's a combination of two properties, 33 and 41 Pleasant Street. It's approximately 3.5 acres. It has uh, 258 feet of frontage on Pleasant Street uh, between Reedsdale Road and uh, Randolph Avenue. Uh, this proposed subdivision road is approximately 375 feet and it ends in a cul-de-sac. Uh, the uh, developer intends to remove the two existing properties. And uh, <coughs> there's been some soil tests done on the roadway area and uh, they hit ledge um, at the cul-de-sac probably nine to 10 feet down. And uh, at the midpoint of the road, it was <coughs> equally uh, similar depth. So we don't anticipate uh, too much ledge removal in the site other than lot four, which uh, clearly has ledge on that lot, and, and potentially lot nine or two, I, I should say. Uh, the zoning for the property is, it's a mix of resident B, which is, requires 20,000 square feet. Uh, land area and 100 feet of frontage and uh, the front section of the development is resident C which requires 7,500 square feet and 75 feet of frontage. All these lots uh, will meet zoning. Um, there is a, a list of waivers that were on the plans that uh, the applicant seeking. Uh, the first one is uh, 6.1.10 which uh, under the subdivision rules and regs, uh, a 50-foot right-of-way is required, and the applicant proposes to build a 40-foot a right-of-way. Uh, the reason for that is um, most of the homes, including Pleasant Street, that it intersects is, have 40-foot right-of-ways, and we thought it was appropriate for the area. Uh, he's proposed to uh, only install one sidewalk in the subdivision versus the requirement of two. It's a pretty short roadway, and we didn't think uh, it was really necessary to have two sidewalks in it. Uh, in the rules and regs in Appendix A, it uh, shows a 28-foot width for pavement. Uh, the applicant's proposing 22 feet of width. Uh, <coughs> again, considering the length of the road and uh, the number of homes, the engineer thought that would be adequate. And then finally, uh, on the easement, the town requires a 20-foot width for utility easements. Uh, we only propose 15 feet uh, because of uh, the, the best area to place the easement was on the edge, the outer edge of the 100-foot no disturb area of the vernal pool. So we were trying to eliminate uh, the, how much area got disturbed. But we think it's still adequate for uh, sewer and water to, to pass through it. Um, the utilities for the subdivision would be uh, town sewer and water uh, access from Pleasant Street right in front of the uh, subdivision. 
Uh, the source system would be a gravity system with an eight inch main and uh, require uh, through new, three new uh, sewer manholes. Uh, we're gonna provide uh, an eight inch water main that's gonna go through the property, up the roadway, uh, through the easement, up to the town property in the rear that's called uh, 51 Quarry Lane. And then uh, proposed to do underground electric. Uh, it'll be supplied by Eversource. And also uh, natural, National Grid has uh, a gas main in Pleasant Street, and we intend to extend that into the development. Uh, the applicant proposes a private way for this subdivision. Uh, therefore, he will uh, set up a homeowners association to uh, manage and maintain the common areas. Uh, primarily, it'll be uh, snow removal. Um, we will submit a, a draft to that homeowners association to the planning board. Uh, we discussed earlier uh, utility easement for at the town for the provide water up to uh, the town access road for potential looping over to Quarry Lane. And uh, regarding lot nine, uh, there was a, a title review of the 33 foot right of way that runs uh, through the horse farm out to Randolph Avenue. And uh, according to uh, that uh, research by uh, Matthew Gaines and also uh, some title work that was prepared by uh, Kablank and Associates. Uh, it says that the property at 41 Pleasant Street has rights of access and right to improve the existing right of way. So the applicant is proposing to uh, pave uh, 100 feet in front of lot nine um, at an 18 foot width uh, to provide uh, proper frontage for that lot nine. Sewer and water is being brought to that uh, lot uh, through the easement that is proposed. And then regarding the uh, size of the, uh, the lots in the neighborhood, uh, there were some questions during the preliminary hear hearings uh, about uh, these uh, lot sizes. And as you can see, they're, they're pretty common in the area, uh, pretty common to the abutting and the surrounding streets and uh, well within keeping of the neighborhood. Um, and then we did a, uh, an analysis of uh, lot coverage, gross floor area, and open space uh, based on lot uh, number one. And as you can see, it, it meets all the requirements. Uh, there was a question regarding the elevations of the uh, homes at lot one and lot eight, and uh, the garages will be on the uh, inner side of the development uh, and the ends of the those proposed homes will uh, have similar architectural detail as the front of the homes. And then uh, the applicant has proposed to uh, plant a significant amount of uh, trees, uh, evergreen trees, plantings along Pleasant Street and along the abutting homes on the right and left side of the development. And, uh, and also street trees along the way. And then uh, we were asked to provide a construction timeline. Uh, obviously it depends on when the, the development is approved, but uh, uh, at this point in time, we uh, anticipate uh, over the winter, maybe uh, installation, removal of the two existing homes, installation of erosion control system, uh, cut and cap the utilities for those the two existing homes uh, and, and remove some trees and, and uh, stump the roadway and, and roughly out the roadway and remove any ledge as necessary. The, the intent of the, the applicant is to remove ledge through uh, chipping, hammering uh, versus drilling and blasting. And uh, at this time, they project that uh, most of the road work will be done during the spring and summer of 2016 and the project would be completed sometime in 2017. All right, in that case, questions from members of the board? 
Alex? Uh, how wide is Pleasant Street? Uh, pavement or right away? Pavement. Uh, I haven't measured it. I would guess it's uh, 24 to 28 feet in that range. This uh, street that you propose to be 22 feet wide is going to have to buy parking or eight houses because uh, there will only be a limited amount of space in the driveways. Uh, 22 feet is, is not uh, adequate in my, my view. I, I don't, I think that the idea of putting up four to six foot spruce trees is not a good plan. I think that uh, uh, deciduous trees of a greater magnitude would be in order and would be significantly more attractive. Uh, getting to your lot nine, this is not this is a, this is not a proper um, a proper uh, lot to be shown on a subdivision plan because what you're basically trying to do here is create an approval not required lot on an existing way. And an approval not required means that subdivision approval is not required. And seeking subdivision approval for an approval not required lot is the wrong way to go. If you seek subdivision approval, you've got to show the street you're going to construct on that 35-foot passageway, and it has to be shown from Randolph Avenue, and it has to meet, it, it will be a subdivision road, and you're going to be asking a waiver of the 50-foot right-of-way uh, to construct a street, um, and presumably you could ask for an 18-foot uh, pavement width, depending on how many other houses use it further down the line, uh, you'd have to put utilities in it. But you, you haven't shown that. If you want to do an a &R plan, we have to determine that this way was in existence on February 10th, 1938. Uh, and we have to determine that it currently has sufficient width, suitable grades, and adequate construction to provide for the needs of vehicular traffic in relation to the proposed use of the land. And I don't think that this way is even constructed. Oh, it's paved. About half of it's paved. Maybe a little bit more than that. Is it paved in front of this lot? No, it's not paved. We're proposing to pave it. And it exists in front of this lot. On the ground. No, we haven't paved it yet. It no. doesn't exist. Is it How a can dirt you say road it on the exists ground? in what, 1938? What, what is the condition of the Well, the road passageway? could have been, uh, it was created prior to 1938. I'm, we haven't researched it yet, but I would guess it was, yes. Well, in any event, I, I would suggest this to you. If you want to do a subdivision, you have to have frontage on a subdivision street. Uh, and this passageway is not a subdivision street. You've got to basically have another subdivision. Uh, at least you, by combining it into one big subdivision with two streets, you avoid the uh, uh, issue of a one-lot subdivision. Uh, so that would be to your advantage. But it's going to, you know, constructing a street in there is going to uh, is going to cost some dough, uh, but in any event, the plan as it's shown uh, doesn't have anything about construction of a street, and therefore, lot nine has no frontage. Uh, and if you were to proceed with this plan, you would have to say not a buildable lot uh, with respect to lot nine. Uh, can I just go back to one thing you said at the beginning uh, regarding the parking? Yeah. Uh, these 
All these homes are going to have two car garages with sufficient space of uh, parking additional cars in the driveway, a minimum of that. And some of them will have double depth lot, uh, driveways where you'll be able to stack uh, four cars. So, I, you know, maybe. I think that each of these homes will probably have at least three cars. Um, and uh, um, I see no reason that Pleasant Street has to be overburdened with parking for a new development that has inadequate parking of its own. Um, so I'm, you know, I would want to measure Pleasant Street to see how wide it is, and I, I think that this street should be the same width. That's what I think, because... Uh, yeah, we could check the width of it. And I'd like to know how wide the right-of-way on Quarry Lane is. It's 40 feet. It's 40 feet, is the, and every, so... Almost every street in that area is 40 the feet. The only street would be uh, uh, Edge Hill, which, uh, or, or, or Pleasant Street, uh, as, it, goes, as it gets into the street. As it goes street. into Reed Still, when it changes to Reed Still, I'd yeah. say that right away is probably 50 there. 50 or yeah. 60. Yeah, that's pretty wide. But they yeah. had a trolley car there, so that impacts the width. In any event, uh, I'm inclined to... Uh, I'm inclined to uh, go for the waiver. If we get better trees, uh, we get assurances on the appearance of these, the sides of these houses as they face the street, because that's going to be extremely important, uh, that the appearance to Pleasant Street is uh, an attractive one. And uh, uh, driveways opening onto the new road. And that's... Yeah, we could show the driveways and the, and the length of the driveways, add that to the plan so you could see that. But I, I mean, you, we, as I say, they, the, uh, the standard for a waiver is that you, it's going to, you know, be basically a benefit to the public. So uh, I think that uh, these issues that I, I suggest uh, uh, would benefit the public and other members of the board may have other, uh, um, other suggestions. Do you other members of the board have other suggestions or I have questions? A question. Brian okay. first, then Cheryl. Um, I noted on the engineer's report, I don't know if you've had a chance to see this. Just it's the first time I've seen They're it. referencing it, the uh, uh, utilities and it needs to be 20 feet. So we'd be looking for your, your feedback on that, uh, no, noting that they have to have a 10-foot separation. Um, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't have the same concern necessarily about the parking on the roadway. What I, what I would suggest is uh, the engineer's report also suggests um, that we would consider, that we should consider making this a public way instead of a uh, condo association way. Um, if we were to do that, I would want to see more conformance with the, uh, the the proper widths of the roadway. I'd be looking more for a 24-foot roadway or a 28-foot roadway um, if, if we're going to have to take this over as a town road. Uh, and I did have one last question just as a, as a suggestion. Um, if this does remain a, a homeowners association road, I don't think a bus will go down it. I'm not sure if a bus will go down it in any case. Uh, so if the, assuming that most of these homes will probably have children, um, I wonder about putting some sort of um, community bus or street, street bus stop at the end of the road. You know, that was proposed for a, a few of the proposals we've seen recently. Um, you know, it was proposed at the uh, former Boyle Estate on Brush Hill Road. So just a consideration um, and a suggestion. It's all from me. Cheryl? Yeah, on the, um, Alex, your comment about the width of the street relative to parking, where we don't have overnight parking on the street, are you assuming because it's a private roadway that the overnight parking is allowed then on the street? I'm thinking of when someone wants to have a few friends over and they park on the street, uh, the, the road has to be sufficient to handle that because otherwise they're going to park on Pleasant Street. Um, 
And um, so it's not necessarily the that the it's three not car the per house. So. It's not the overnight. It's the day to day of uh, normal use. You know when they. Yeah. Well, a tree lawn, yeah. Parking on the tree lawn, but is there? Um, I oh, I was thinking of uh, uh, the 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 landscape services coming in and parking their trucks. And they get hurt. Um, I do know that the engineering department just sent this over late this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So I know that uh, Mr. Celebrity and Mr. Sullivan have not seen this at this point. So this is the first time they've seen it. So they didn't, they weren't prepared to address these particular issues. Okay. Um, I think the issues in here about uh, the bond for the construction of the road, I think the issue of the uh, acceptance of the final product as a town road, um, if we wind up plowing it, um, we don't want it falling apart. If the homeowner association, something happens to wit and they don't take care of the road, it isn't the homeowner association and it isn't the developer that they're going back after. It's, engineer, it's DPW and engineering that they're calling and saying, but my street is a mess. Um, they want to make sure that they're either protected by it or they, they want to make it sure it's built to the right standards. Um, would that include a snow pile-up place and that, rather than push it all into Pleasant Street? Uh-huh. I mean, that, that goes back to the issue of where do you stack it on a cul-de-sac. Right, snow storage. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, did, I did look at it with engineering and did ask the question, uh, could and should the, the bulb end be an island that could then take and hold a lot of that snow, mm -hmm. low vegetation, but have snow for the pile up there. We could pile uh, it up in front of lot four, too. There's plenty of space there. Uh, you know, the 22 foot width means we'll have less snow on the road, too. But that means you're dumping snow from a, from the rest of the street onto somebody's private property, which no, becomes right another away. issue. The right of way's 55 feet across, well, it's 100 feet across, so it's only gonna be paved a little less than that, so there'd be some room there. Other questions? Mike, did you have anything? Can I just direct a question, Bill? Yeah. On the um, plowing, if the town, if, if the HOA does not maintain the road, does not plow the road, um, is there a requirement due to fire for the town to, to maintain and plow it, or is it just we do it because we do it? We plow an awful lot of private roads in town that we shouldn't be. But that is a issue that gets brought up about every third year by the selectmen and it's, when it does come up, it's a, it's a nasty fight. Um, I know DPW is looking at it and they would prefer to have it fall under their chapter 90 issue, count the road and be done with it. Um, it wasn't the, narrowing of the road but it's the construction and to make sure that the base of it comes up to be meet the standards that the drainage meets the standards um, and having the bond there that says that it's built to those standards um, I know they put in a few other things like they would like to have uh, stamped as built that can be filed with the registry upon completion um, They want final subdivision as built. Um, one of the other things that we talked about were uh, rear lot line on the major corners, putting in uh, stakes, whether it's an iron pipe, just on the major corners. Can you talk to us a little bit about lot four and the issues with frontage on lot four? Um, you brought it up, Tim, but uh, it wasn't addressed at the beginning. So the, the, the definition of frontage um, in, in the bylaw, and um, you'll have to correct me if I, if I mix this up, um, frontage has to be, it has to, 80% of the required frontage has to extend in a parallel fashion into, this, into the lot 75% of the required frontage. So basically, 
you have to be able to draw an 80 foot line from the, the frontage and go into the site 75 feet. Okay. Um, and that's straight line frontage on a curved roadway, um, which, you know, the, the, the shape of lot four um, kind of is, is odd in that way. And um, when, when, when the applicant sent in the, the, the sort of the, the final uh, plans um, for, the, for the public hearing, um, it's sort of, I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing with lot four. And so I, I would, I'd like to hear a little bit about that. Well, what's the problem with Lot Four? I mean, they they have the uh, they have 114.97 feet of frontage from lot line to lot line, and then they show the 75 feet, and then if you draw a parallel line to the uh, to the frontage line, I think that that should do it, shouldn't it? I mean, that's the 75, that, that's not going to be, you're, you're going to be able to get 75% of the distance in. I mean, this could just be me, me not quite understanding exactly how, how, the, how the definition operates, but I, I, I interpret it as where straight line frontage from where the two side lines of the lot hit the frontage, that's your straight line frontage. And that's got to go. Eighty feet of that has to go seventy-five feet into the lot, um, which the way the the, the way the, that parallel line where those side lines hit, just because it's kind of that lot kind of sneaks around. Um, you know, the, the 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 spirit of of the definition is there in this lot. I mean, it's not a it's, it's not a pork chop or a rat tail or whatever lot that we're trying to talk about. I mean, it's got it's got frontage. But it's not kind of meeting the definition. Um, now, if if you know the lines that they're drawing here, I mean, if that if that works, I mean, that's they they need eighty feet, right? They need eighty feet. That is frontage. Paralleling. Yeah. Seventy-five feet in, and then eighty feet they need paralleling the frontage line. Right. So the question is. And, and we've had it before where we've got these, these trapezoidal or parallelograms uh, that, that are not rectangles, but they, they, they angle in. And it seems, if you angle in, I mean, if you take a, uh, if you go 75 feet in from the, the, the common lot line with lot five and go 75 feet paralleling the 75 foot line that's already there, mm -hmm. then there's plenty of room to do that. Then you, get, you actually get a, uh, get a rectangle. Right. So that does it, doesn't and, and, it? Well, I mean, it, 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 it does it, it, does it in, in the spirit of, of it, but the letter of it says where, where the side lines of the lot meet the frontage, the line between those is your straight line frontage. Right. And Which is the 114 feet. And then you, you show the 75 feet going in, and then you do a parallel line into lot four. But you couldn't use the right of way. Yeah, it's only for the, it's over the, um, the, oh, the oh, cul-de-sac oh, 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 part. Oh. One end of your line ends up out of a lot. And while we're looking at this, just so people know, we're looking at section one definitions of All the right. zoning bylaw definition. I agree definition with you, Tim. Percentage. This is brilliant. And she right. <laughs> so, so, and, and I mean, and, and like I said, it's it's, <laughs> it's it's a frustrating thing because you look at this lot and, and like it clearly there's seventy there you know. If you did this, Tim, if you parallel, it doesn't work. Right. If you go. Exactly. If yeah. you jog it and you tilt it, like it's fine. But it's so I mean, like parallel. you know, the 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 sideline of this lot, and I'm, I'm sorry for the camera, but I mean, you know, the sideline for the lot has to hit this part of the cul-de-sac, and if it does <laughs> that and it goes in, you're all set. Um, the way it is now, I mean, like I said, the the, the spirit of, of 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 the definition. What is does there. it? What does it say? Where it's under the definition the of frontage, right? Yes, um, it's page one, section one, At definitions least number seven. percent of the required frontage measured parallel to the aforementioned straight line. 
must be maintained without interruption for at least 75% of the required frontage. It doesn't say that you can't use the road that I can see. <laughs> well, but that's not part of the law. The road is not part of the law. The road is the road to be, you know, simplistic. Is it simplistic? It, it doesn't bring up the road in that definition. No, but you're talking about the frontage of the lot. The road can't be the lot. It's either road or lot. It's the not road, road that doesn't count. I, I mean, I was, I was, I was uh, with you for a while, Paul, but now I <laughs> just pointed frontage. out that the road is there. Yeah. There you go. This is a, uh, um, this is a. Uh, uh, now, if you. This is messing up the building envelopes is what it's doing. If you, um, if you cut it off. And this, you'll have to look at how much square feet have you have here, so that the lot line for four actually starts here. You've got your cul-de-sac. Maybe this is an unbuildable lot. Does that then fix the frontage? I think it does. So you need to look at how much land you're. So that bit where four. A hundred feet. Well, four meets lot three, and then you've got that swoop around for the cul-de-sac. If that becomes an unbuildable lot. That could be your snow storage. That could be your snow right. storage, exactly. So that lot four actually starts much closer to the ending curve of the cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. Then I yeah. think you get your frontage that way. Mm -hmm. Have you a look at the measurements of that. Feet. You need 100 feet. So now you have to How look at that. you going to get that? You're going to have to move into lot five. Yeah, well, the lot, lot five has... Uh, has some room, and lot nine has some room. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, but but what that's why you've got to do, yeah. because uh, you, you, you have to play with your geometry a little bit. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, it isn't an easy fix. No, it's not an easy fix. But I think you start by not having that first part 60, be 90, lot four. I think you make I, that your unbuildable lot in your snow storage. I think that that's, I think that's probably an excellent idea. Yeah. The row is 100 feet, though. And if you look at the right away. Uh, you're only going to get 100 on lot 4. It's, it, yeah. it looks like it would yeah. fit if you cut that piece off and made it either attach it to lot 3 or... Uh, you still have a big piece of roadway in the middle of it. Yeah, well, it depends on how far into you cut, the, you cut the lot. I mean, you can cut it back here, but then you still need... You're right, Alex, you still need the 100 feet. I think you're going to have to look well, at how course, you shift that geometry around. Of course, around. you know, uh, the frontage we know on, on a... Uh, um, we go from the, the layout. Yeah. So you go in from the layout, not from the pavement. Right. Exactly. So you might be able to do it. The other thing is, I mean, they have room on lot five. Lot nine has plenty of square footage. Going to have so they have room to move the boundaries of four, five, and nine around. It's, it's simply, yeah. That, I mean, they've got. A, they're going to have to. Yeah. Go back to the drawing board. Little. I think you. I think your solution solves it. As long as he doesn't lose what? five thousand, losing the other piece of lot. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. What's the solution? Well, just put just say the, the hundred foot frontage is right here. You, you, this is not. Uh, that's not a hundred feet. It is. 100 you can't feet. do the curve for the hundred feet. It has to be straight, straight line. It is straight. Oh, there that's you go. feet. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. do it. So you can if you move right back here, right? seventy-five, you've got okay, the room. Yeah. Now, if you move back seventy-five feet, just barely, you still have you've got the room. Mm -hmm. more than eighty percent of it. It has to be uh, parallel to the frontage yeah. line. It is. Yes, give me, give me this. <laughs> this is your frontage line. Mm -hmm. That's your frontage line, okay? Well, that's 100 yeah, feet. Yeah, but yeah, you're using the roadway still. Right there, right no, no, no. You're going the parallel so to the roadway. That's fine. But can you do, can you do fine, your 80 feet? Why isn't it because because what Tim line. said is when you move yeah. back 75 feet, you have to have at least 80% of that frontage, and you have to be on the lot. If you're over here and you move back 75 feet and you're parallel, you're no longer on the lot. You're off you the can lot. go down there, though. Yes. Go that way. No, but you're That's not parallel with this frontage yet. This is the frontage. You've got to stay parallel. Being parallel, this is parallel down here. No. Yeah, but it's... You no, get, you've got a, you I get think, a I think parallelogram. By, I think what they mean by parallel is no, like we've this. We've done this before. It isn't... You don't need a rectangle. You, you don't need a, need a rectangle. You don't yeah. need a square. Oh, okay, then it does work. It does work, you but, but you're starting to lose a lot of you're starting to lose a lot of acreage. That's and then we'll, we'll quit after but this. But they've got but they've got lot nine. They've got thirty two thousand. Move back seventy five feet. So. Like out of lot nine. Yeah, because lot five has right. twenty one, so it's only got a thousand that are moved. Using, yeah. 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 yeah, you're using part of the roadway, Mike. That's the problem. You're all set then. If you're not, if you're using the roadway as part of your as part of your setback, can you use twenty percent of the roadway? What? Can you use twenty percent of the roadway? Twenty five. 
percent. Remember, it has to go back seventy-five percent. So you get twenty-five percent. Alex, of it. if you're not using the roadway, you just said I don't have to move straight back, just parallel. Well, if I stay parallel, I can move over there. Okay, go. You go up. Changing. Yeah, we're envelope. doing the same thing at the same. Yeah. yeah. Twenty building. What, what, what building envelope? I'm in the building envelope. I ain't changing no building envelope. I'm staying parallel. I'm going seventy-five feet in. And I'm staying parallel. Yeah, you want to still get back. No, I think what, what you're saying is the setback line changes then. But I still think it works. Yeah. I mean, looking back at it, I you're set. I think that it, that it changes it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it yeah. does change it. But it doesn't, but it doesn't make it unworkable. It, it doesn't make no. it unworkable. Yeah. And, and lot four has 25,000 as it is, so it can afford to lose it has some. some. I think yeah. you're just going to have to cheat a you're little bit. To, yeah, well, you're going to have to take some from lot nine and shift that line around a little bit. But I think you'd be fine. So, no, Paul, go and make that work. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think is what the board is and saying. Design too. a street in from the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But the, you're going to need a waiver because there's a 500 foot rule on a street. If you were to uh, try and do a subdivision street, there's a 500 foot rule. So right. uh, you would not only need a waiver for the, the width of the right of way, but for the length of the uh, street that you'd be proposing. <laughs> Any more questions from board members? Otherwise, I'll open it up to the public. Um, yes. Do, does the town have other streets that serve this quantity of homes that are at this right of way and road, paved roadway width? Do we know? Did you just ask how many, are there other homes on that 33 foot? No, road? I mean, are there other examples in town oh. where we have a roadway of this proposed width? I think um, that. I, I'm just. Uh, Mary Rebster Lane is 18 feet with four homes on it. Mm -hmm. This is. But eight this homes. is eight homes on 22 feet, right? I think it's 26 feet at Stonehill Lane, or isn't it 26? It's, and, that's why. And that was uh, we fought for 26 uh, there, and that is a similar uh, similar issue. So this would, so this is um, this not a precedent, long. really, is what I'm asking for, for this width, I guess, right? I just want to understand. Same number of houses. Actually, uh, Stonehill has a few less houses. It's, it's twice as long the road. It may be, but the number of houses served is significantly less. Right. That's five. Five houses, okay. Anything else from board members? All right, if you two will step back. Sure. We're going to open up the public comment portion of the public hearing. I'm going to read the rules for that. Please wait to be recognized before speaking. Come to the table and give your name and address. Speak into the microphone. When you're done, please leave the table. All questions or comments must be directed to the chair. Speakers may not cross-examine applicant, board members, or other speakers. The applicant will be asked to respond to questions at the end of the public input session. And um, then we'll move back to figuring out what the next steps are. So does anybody wish to speak? Yes, sir. Please come forward. Good evening. My name is Greg Zazula, and I am in a butter. I own 704 and 706 Randolph Ave. Um, the property has five horses on it, and it has for a few years. There used to be up to 50 horses on the property, um, but when I took control of it, I opened it up to rescue horses and rescue animals, therapy animals. I don't charge anybody any money. It's all free. I pay for everything. I redesigned the farm so that the rescue horses would have large paddocks. And we only have five horses there. I don't know that we're ever going to get more than that. It depends on what animals are in trouble and uh, one of those horses is mine it's a therapy horse I suffer from an illness it causes short-term memory loss so I have some demands or requests that I'm willing to share the costs of 
uh, if the developer will work with me. Um, horses are a very fickle animal, especially rescue horses. They've, they've been abused, so they're very easily spooked. Um, tonight I heard the developer talk about blasting. Uh, that would lead to a horrific situation. I'm not here to oppose or to delay or to cause any issues with the developer. What I need them to do is communicate with me. So I'm going to probably ask for things that nobody's ever asked for. Uh, one of them is going to be to communicate with me by email on a daily basis. If they are going to make noise such as drilling or blasting, I will move my horses at my expense. Um, I have a caretaker that volunteers her time to the rescue animals. We will move them to the barn and we will lock the doors so that the horses are sheltered. However, if they are blasting, I will remove those horses and by trailer, I will pay that expense. Uh, hopefully, there's not a lot of blasting because it's difficult to get some of these horses into the trailers and it is traumatic for the horses. They, they've already been through enough. Um, but I understand construction and development, so I will find a place for my at least four of the horses. Um, I, I don't think that's unreasonable, and I think I want to continue to support the shelter that is proposed uh, across the street. Um, and any of the developments that's there, I, I'm going to ask uh, the town or any other development that's, that's done, pretty much the same situation. Uh, I wasn't properly notified for these meetings, but I'm not always around. So email will work. I, I did find out about the meeting. There was multiple meetings. So there was a pre-application, a uh, series of pre-applications, but this is the first night of the oh, actual okay. formal application. All right. I, I so got it. You, you haven't missed. Okay. Then I got a meeting notice we had the yeah. that when I signed for it, it had already, the meeting had already happened. It's not a problem okay. because I, I know that sure, these. I made sure that Greg was notified. I sent you two. Yeah. I sent you one at Randolph Avenue. I sent you one at Blue Hill Avenue. Right. Okay. Because I wasn't sure which one you were going to get. I'll get both of them okay. because I know. The, the mail department knows that. And that's not an issue. I'm not complaining. Right. Um, that's how you normally notify people. That's not good enough for me when it comes to blasting or noise. Mm -hmm. I've had issues with um, drilling uh, and environmentals, and we did not have a good time up there. Mm -hmm. So um, what did work out was letting me know so that I will get back to the developer on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. I just got this new fancy phone, and it has all my notes in it. But I'm not recording the meeting. So one, one thing I'm going to ask the developer is to, I don't know how to do this, but I would like a recording of every town meeting that goes on to develop that property because I'm not going to be able to attend these meetings. We, the, the town records them. So okay, so he, yeah. if I will pay for that, mm -hmm. but I would like that on a DVD because of my short-term memory loss, I'm not going to remember this meeting tomorrow, unfortunately. Um, it's the first time I've been out in probably a year. So uh, that's the good news. The bad news is I'm not going to remember any of you tomorrow. Well, that's the good news. <laughs> Just in his case. Okay. But he can record that on DVD. I can't do that. Oh, but you can get them all online. Oh, they stay oh, there. oh, oh, okay. Oh, I didn't stay know that. There. Oh, good. All right. Well, maybe Mr. Clark has a way for me to... Just get them. And I'll just review them um, and take notes on them. This is the first night for my phone, so bear with me. Um, one of the things that I, I would like, and this would be at cost to the developer, um, we built our paddocks 
on as close to the property line as we possibly could because there's nice woods there and I'm sure that nobody's ever going to develop that, although that didn't happen. And I wasn't able to buy it from Frank O'Neill. Somebody else bought it. So um, I would purchase that property if possible, but I'm not going to oppose development. Uh, the paddocks, I don't want to move the paddocks. Uh, I can work with the developer. Um, I believe somebody from the board mentioned uh, uh, a border of trees or something like that. I'm not going to tell them what, what to purchase, but if they could put a border of like arborvitaes, something, you're never going to stop all the noise, but what you are going to do is you're going to stop the visual from the horses. Um, so something like that, even if they purchased them, they installed them, I would purchase them after and have them install them on my property because I'm going to want to have that border. They could also do something like install them on my property so that we have a border from the start. I'll work with them on that. If, if I have to pay for that, I will pay for that. Um, the other thing I'm going to ask is, is that nobody um, goes near those horses because they are rescue horses. And if they look like zoo animals, they're not. Um, if you go near the horse and they can go right up to the paddock, the horse swings its head, it will kill somebody. It will, it will certainly kill a small child. And I don't want any lawsuits up there. Any lawsuits. So if I will post signs, but I would want to educate the developer. I've done this in the past. It's been very successful. Um, but I understand construction, and there's going to be delays. There's going to be changes. I need them to think of me um, first and let me know what the change is. I will get back to them immediately. They'll have my cell phone number, um, and they can text me. And I'm not going to hold them up a minute. Uh, I, I do not work. I am disabled, and uh, I will work with them. Two years is not a long time for me. I've, I've lived in this town since 1980, 89. And I've had no issues. It's been a wonderful experience for me. It has been. So uh, I don't think that's unreasonable. I would prefer to buy the property, but I know that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I know Mr. Sullivan has been very successful at his developments, and somehow they go through. So I'm just going to be smart and work with him instead of oppose him. Um, I believe that's everything. So I would like to um, pretty much make this my last appearance. And um, I, I don't know if you can make it a requirement, but I, I would like it to be a requirement. And I would like them to do it out of the goodness of their heart for the rescue animals. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, as you know, normally I let uh, everybody ask their questions first. But in this case, Paul, do you have anything? You'd like to tell us about how closely you're going to work with? Sure. I just want to tell Greg that uh, we're not going to blast at all up there. Paul, can you grab the mic? Yeah, I just want to let uh, Greg know that we're not going to do any blasting up there. That uh, we've already said. Didn't they just say you were going to? No, we're not going to. No, we're going to. Rule out any blast. Oh, oh, okay. We're going to do some chipping, but it's going to be on the lot that's furthest away from you. It's over here. There's some some rock there, but um, other than that, the rest of the lots, I don't believe we're going to have any issues, and we have no problem uh, keeping Greg informed of what's going on, and, and you know, avoiding not letting anybody, engineers or anybody, go on his property or disturb his horses. Right. I've had that issue before. Right, it was resolved. Yep. Just communication is all I need. Sure, And that's I fine. now have a cell phone, so. Yep. Yeah. We have no problem with that. And uh, planting trees, working with him to plant yeah, trees. Yeah, we could create a buffer for his property, yeah. sure. Would you want to put that on my property or your property? 
Uh, maybe we, I could meet you out there. We could see where the lot line is and see what works better. All right. I am, you have just enough room, but I, they have to be further, far enough back as the, the horses will eat them. Sure. Yep. That's fine. We can work something out. Whatever but, works better. Yeah, but it's before the vernal pool, so it would be still on my property. Yeah. It would be outside the 100-foot uh, right. motor disturb area. So. And we would need your machine, and then I would put the horses away while you would put the... Uh, yeah, we, we plan it in advance right. and work it out. Okay, yep, so sure. you guys can work this out. Yes. Sure. Well, that's what I'm line. hoping. Okay. Yep. You know, uh, I've had good luck and I've had all kinds of um, um, coordination and, and just, just nothing but happiness in the town of Milton. Good to know. Good. It's a great place to live. We still number three? Yep. Number two? Well, how can you beat that? Thank you very much. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Please come forward. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Brian Walsh, and for 30 years I've lived at 56 Pleasant Street, which is it's on the, the maps here just outside the property. As you can imagine, in the 30 years I've been there, I tell you, unfortunately, most of the neighbors that were there when I moved in have moved out or, or passed away. Really good people, including Mrs. O'Neill and Mrs. Murphy, where the properties are involved. Um, one of the few neighbors that is still there, uh, Kathy Grant, was, wanted to be here tonight. And she had it, I apparently reached out to the chairman and asked about the timing and all, and she unfortunately physically was not able to come tonight. She's brought, gave me a letter and asked me if I would drop it off. But previous to this, she and I had discussed a couple of issues that, that I also feel uh, are reasonable. She has a few more here on her letter, and so Mr. Chairman, if you're amenable to it, I'd, I'd like, it's a brief letter, I'd like to read it. Please I'll leave it summarized at the end. Perfect. Again, this is from, uh, well, this letter is to address to the planning board in regard to the proposal of subdivision at 33 and 41 Pleasant Street. My name is Kathleen Grant. I have resided at 27 Pleasant Street for 45 years. This proposed subdivision directly abuts my property line, and the following are a list of my concerns. One is noise factor. Jackhammers, trucks coming and going and beeping, that uh, happens especially when they back up. And at the old quarry with the ledge and the boulders, could they use the old dump road to access the site? The question she's asking when they're during the construction period. This town doesn't apparently have a ruling and needs a ruling to address the noise issue. She suggests, and this is something I discussed at length with her previous to knowing I was going to be reading this letter and, and agree with her, it makes a lot of sense to me. She suggests starting time of 8 a.m., this is during the construction period, and a finishing time of 4 p.m. Uh, out of concern of the people needing peace and quiet in their homes, the peaceful enjoyment of their own homes in the neighborhood. Uh, what she doesn't have written here, we discussed at length, and we think that makes sense, it would be Monday through Friday. So the construction, it would be significant construction, doesn't happen Sundays and Saturdays. Two, congestion. This one-way section of Pleasant Street. This is a major traffic cut through from 6.45 to 9.30 a.m. and again at 4.30 to 5.45 p.m. Plus parking on both sides of the street near the cookie factory and adding nine more homes to this scenario with their children uh, will need some sort of traffic control, at least during the construction, i.e. policemen. And I'm reading it directly from here. Number three, strain on utilities. They're planning to tap into water, sewer, electric, and gas in this small section. Is the new road a private or public utility? And what about streetlights? And I know that was discussed here, and she would have noted that. Four is insurance. This insurance is another interesting area that I discussed at length with her, and, and Things makes sense, and this may be standard operating procedure. We, we just did not know. Is this construction company bonded insured for resulting damage to any properties uh, due to and during the, the uh, construction? And with the possibility of a potential developer going bankrupt, is there bonding and insurance to prevent or handle the cleanup of the site if something like that would happen? And she, she says here, I have an artisan, uh, excuse me, an artesian well 
uh, which might be in jeopardy of contamination during the construction, and would that be protected if, she, if the company were bonded and insured? And by the way, she does have an artesian well, and for years, I can tell you, I drove by the small sign her husband Jeff had had out uh, saying, Hidden Brook. There is a hidden brook that she notes comes out of the property, and they did an artesian well deep below it to provide water for, for their property. Anyway, aside. Number five, and this is the last point, since I'm a direct abutter to the, to the noise and construction, this will impinge on my ability for my peaceful and quiet enjoyment of my property. To that end, I am requesting an adjustment to my real estate taxes for the duration. <laughs> and it's signed, uh, thank you for taking this into consideration. Sincerely, Kathleen Grant from 27 Pleasant Street. So Kathleen is only two of the abutters, that, uh, people in the neighborhood that, that I recall are still there when I moved in 30 years, and she's been there 45 years. So uh, I'm going to leave that with you, right, Madam Chairman. You. And I hope, thank you. Yep. Uh, I hope you could, at, at the appropriate time, address if it's reasonable, feasible to have those hours of operation and avoid weekends and the insurance issue. Yep. And thank you for your time and everything you do for the town. Thank you very much. Does anybody else wish to speak? No? In that case, Paul, you can come forward and address the questions that we had <coughs> on truck access, uh, the start and ending times and days of the week congestion and traffic detail, uh, the insurance issues and bonding, and the artesian well. I'm afraid the real estate taxes are out with our jur <laughs> jurisdiction, so. Uh, regarding the construction access, uh, there is no other access from, uh, from behind the property. Uh, quarry, uh, the town access road doesn't directly connect to this property, so we couldn't get through there if we want to. Plus, a uh, hundred foot no disturb area uh, is very close to the town property line. There's very little room to get through there. Um, I think we can manage the construction in a way that won't create a lot of disturbance in the neighborhood uh, during the construction of the roadway. Um, regarding uh, the hours of operation, I, I, we just anticipated working under the standard hours that have been issued in previous subdivisions and uh, and weren't looking for anything different than that. Um, I'll let uh, Mr. Salberti address the bonding and his company's uh, issues, insurance. I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, yes, we, do, we're, we are bonded and insured. We have a, um, the standard general liability, workman's comp, and then umbrella policies as well. Up to, I think, uh, 10 million. Uh, protection of the artesian well? Um, we probably have to check the location first. Yes, that's something we'd want you to follow up with. Have our engineer located. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but uh, we don't intend to do any blasting, so uh, I'm sure we can avoid it. And it doesn't appear on that side, on her, on the grant side, that there's. Uh, going to be ledge where those homes are going in that are but her from the uh, test holes we did earlier. What sort of a fence is there on the Grant property line? Um, I believe it's, uh, it's a wooden fence, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a four foot. Four foot. Yeah, it's a five foot wooden fence I think she has on her property right now. We, you know, some of the neighbors might prefer fence and some may want plantings. Uh, you know, that's something we discussed with them and before we made a, f a final decision of what we'd install for a buffer. And uh, traffic control during construction, especially during the hours. It is quite an impressive cut through. It's amazing how quickly people can come off Randolph and mm. oh, yes. swing into that area. So have you considered how you're going to deal with the unexpected surprise of a few construction trucks uh, for them when they attempt that um, yeah I mean we'd have your standard you know construction entrance with mm -hmm. you know um, with you know six foot fence around the perimeter of the site and um, there's the cuts and fills is not a lot of material leaving the site so we're going to try to manage the materials on site to uh, you know limit the amount of trucks coming entering and exiting the site 
we might consider, um, uh, board members, when we discuss this further, we may want to consider asking for some sort of sign uh, up on the junction between Randolph and Pleasant to give people fair warning that. Construction, seek alternate routes. Yes, exactly. Maybe we could leave that up permanently. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to Maybe say that. Right <laughs> yeah. we, could, we could prepare a traffic management plan. That would be very helpful. It's, it's a simple yeah. plan that will show, you know, all the signage, the construction entrance, the gate, the fencing, and then you could comment on that. Just I mean, the good thing is uh, Mr. Salaberry is going to do all this construction himself. He has his own company that will do all the site work. So it's not like he's bringing in a, a contractor who might not be aware of all the th right. important things that the neighborhood is looking for. Yes, Brian. Uh, could we just go back to hours for a minute? Yes. So you're looking for standard hours. Could you just help us define that? Is it uh, we, we were asked for 8 to 4 and Monday to Friday. So can you just specifically respond to those, those two things? Um, you know, most companies work Saturdays. Uh, we definitely like to work Saturdays. The, you know, the more hours we get it, the quicker the work gets done. Um, eight is a relatively somewhat of a late, you know, uh, I think the town bylaws allow a 7 o'clock start in the morning. Uh, so do you have any uh, preference on that? Or? I would prefer 7, and Saturdays would be just as needed. Much. Right. So seven to three. We might want to define the as needed. I think heavy construction on Saturdays, right. but that could, that's fine. We yeah. can talk about that more as we work Try our way through. Typically, yeah. it's a Monday through Friday yeah. work week for us. Yes. Um, on the um, St. Pius property, um, the yes. Windmere, we came to an agreement there about uh, people being able to arrive on site. I believe it was. Yes. And then the equipment cl deliveries couldn't start as soon as people could arrive on site. Right, that's so correct. So that might be something we refer back. Pull that from one mirror and that, have a yeah. look. Yeah, we should um, pull that out and see what that is. Yeah, something like idea. that would be fine. You know, we wouldn't have 6, 6 a.m. deliveries and things like yeah. that to destroy the neighborhood. And certainly managing, I think to your point on the traffic management plan, making sure that you don't have three trucks, three large trucks arriving simultaneously. Right. To uh... Any other questions from board members? If not, it looks like we are continuing this. Obviously, we're going to want you to respond to the engineer's letter. Bill, you've got some, something? I would like you to address the uh, stormwater review, which if you can do that now, I can set that up. Otherwise, we're pushing back a few more weeks. Yes, stormwater review. That goes back to. Who's going to review it? We go back to Mrs. Eggleston. Okay. Town engineer doesn't have capacity at the moment. They asked that it go to. Okay. Well, which is traditional. Sometimes he does it. Sometimes. Uh, We're losing one of the engineers. Oh. oh. well, that doesn't help. Okay. So yes, can we get that started? Ask them, not me. Can we get the <laughs> stormwater review started? Yes. Uh, do we contact directly and submit the plans, or will the uh, I will planning give them office to me, and I'll get them to her. Okay. She actually. Who are you using at CEC? Who's your lead person? Uh, Kent. 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 Yep. I'll have her call Kent. Is there a, a retainer required for services? Uh, we'll talk. Okay. Thank you, so then our next meeting, which was originally scheduled for November 12th, and we have a conflict. I know you sent out a poll, Tim. Did you come up with a... <clears throat> I got a few... A date responses. that works. Can, can you poke that over? Mm. I think it was on the poll. Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, I was told somebody had a conflict on the 12th, if that's I not do. true. I do. Yes, okay. Yeah. So... Um, the, the the previous Thursday, the 5th, looks no good. Um, the next Thursday, the 19th, as far as uh, what I heard, is, is okay. Um, and then, I mean, I, I don't know what, what the appetite is for other days of the week. Um, but uh, the 4th, the 18th, the 16th, the 24th, the 25th, the 27th are no good. Um, but otherwise... So the 19th is looking really good, guys. What do you think? 
pretty late. What about the Monday after uh, the 12th? Monday after the 12th, um, the 16th. 16th. Not, not, not great. Okay. One of the few days that isn't wide open. 17th? No. Okay. Pushing right up to the 19th. <laughs> <laughs> Is that 16 because of your schedule or rooms? It's because of the schedule of uh, certain board, board members. These board members. What else is currently scheduled right now? We have nothing else scheduled, right? I mean, we have the, the 12th scheduled, but. The 17th. Is 17th I have open, but other people may not. I do not. Okay, Why don't we so do the 19th? I think the 19th is looking pretty good. Uh, yeah, I have a potential conflict. So that's why I'm wondering if you just keep it the 12th and I can watch the meeting. Okay. Assuming you're not going to vote that night, I'm happy to just watch the meeting. All right, then let's keep it the 12th in that case. Brian will watch the meeting. Great. So you Excellent. The 12th. 7 15 on the 12th. We don't have anything else scheduled, do we, yet? No, I don't. All right, 7 15 on the 12th it is. But we will probably uh, be further discussing there on uh, yeah. so we'll get the public on the 12th. Hearing. Then that doesn't work because I've already missed one. So that. Let me look at the 19th. fifth. How many people had conflicts on the fifth? Just one. That would be me. Let me have a look <laughs> at my calendar. My two sets of two calendars. Minutes. Oh, yeah, I also have a conflict on the fifth, but. I you don't have to vote, vote, however, so yeah. you're good. Doesn't, doesn't make a difference. Hang on. Oh, no, I don't. No, I'm all set on the, leave fifth. It on the sixth. I'm easy peasy yeah. on the fifth, yeah. Okay. Fifth. All right, let me look at my fifth. I can make the fifth. Right. Oh, no, sorry. I can't make the fifth. I, absolutely, I, I was looking at the wrong part. I absolutely cannot make the fifth. I have a client meeting. Well, you said two different things. <laughs> yes, well, I was looking at the wrong part of the schedule. I could do the fourth. About the fourth? How about the ninth? I could do the fourth. I can also do the ninth. And I could do the ninth. Those are both okay for me. Ninth? Anybody else have an issue? I like the ninth. Ninth, ninth it is. The other week is the ninth. Monday. 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 Monday, Monday. I'll need to run my daughter ninth. that night. All right, so the ninth <laughs> at 7.15. Great, thank you. Works, thank you. Thank you. And we can talk about other dates towards the end of the meeting. All right, next on the schedule is our continued discussion of Thayer Nursery. You should have handed out tonight. Where did mine go? You should have another number of things that were handed out tonight. Um, one of which is a letter um, from an insurance agency about lighting. One of which is Chapter 40A Zoning Section 3, which is, I'm not sure who put that in there. And then you have the draft special permit. You will see that it says last updated October 22nd with my initials on it. It has page numbers, always useful. That is what we're going to be working from. So it should have been handed out in the material. Yes, keep going, Joel, just saw it. No, but there that you. one, this, okay. Got it, this yeah. one. As long as it says October 22nd, 2015, yeah. my initials, that is the one we're going to be using. And this. And that, yeah, that was, those were all other items in there. Oh, there was um, an email from Mr. Johanny in there as well, which you guys can uh, Read all the extra meat stuff, but let's start with the draft special permit. We are going to be going through it. Um, as you know, the public hearing is now closed, so we're going to be going through the draft special permit item by item. Um, I understand that the applicant has some questions about some of the provisions that are in here, so obviously we, we get those. If you have questions for the applicant as we go through this, please direct them to me. Um, because we're in a public meeting and a not a public hearing, there is no going to be no public comment. So you'll see when you look at the draft special permit, uh, first of all, I understand in one of the newspapers it was announced that we had approved the um, application, and I just want to clarify that that is not true. The question for the board at the last time was simply whether I should be drafting something for us to discuss in the positive or the negative, and I understand that must have gotten mistranslated. So I want to just clarify to everybody that no vote of either approval or denial has been taken by the planning board on this. 
uh, text and bold is boilerplate language that you will have seen in other special permit decisions that we've done. Underlined text within that boilerplate indicates where the language has been changed to be specific to this application. Red text indicates missing information or a question the board needs to answer as part of our deliberations. Green text is text directly taken from section in. Now, not all of the green, all of the text in here. Some of the text in here is in black. It's been taken from section in, but that was coming out of the draft order of conditions that we've been working from. Blue text indicates language taken from one of the special permits or the 2001 decision from the ZBA. So I'm going to walk you through it, and then we'll stop at the appropriate points. The first part is a boilerplate language that says, you know, we are the special permit granting authority, that we're doing this under section 3, subsection N, that we are obviously, if the board approves it, granting a special permit for a landscaping business use identifies the owner and the applicants and refers to them as applicant, identifies the lots of land, and we need to actually talk about the lots of land. Um, uh, there are three uh, in the vicinity of where we've been doing our site walks, uh, 270 Hillside Street, 0 and 24 Forest Street. There are also um, 217 and 237 Hillside Street. Uh, I believe the applicant had indicated that the uh, landscaping equipment needs access to those for um, accessing compost and other items stored on there. So we need to talk about putting those, how we, how we deal with those. Uh, it then goes to say that the special permit uh, is going to be constructed, the, con the conditions that require construction will be constructed as shown on the plan with X number of sheets um, and that we're referring to those as site plan. Uh, and that we're granting site plan approval again if the board agrees to do that. The next section, I'll just run you through the sections and then we'll come back and do them in detail. Uh, section one, authorized development, is what talks about the things that are actually being physically constructed on the site. So the fence is being physically constructed, the drainage improvements, the land care yard, uh, it requires that they be maintained. Um, and. Uh, we're not authorizing the expansion of anything that has been granted by a special permit. Again, this is all up for discussion. Section number two is authorized uses. Uh, you'll see pulled out quite a bit from um, the zoning on that. And then notes that, uh, uh, notes what they can do. Um, if you remember from the zoning, there's a definition of the landscaping business. Uh, and then there are things that the landscaping business is allowed to do under the zoning, and then there are things that the landscaping business may do if this planning board allows it. So that pulls in everything from the zoning that we have talked about in the past. Um, we also talked about not allowing things that weren't in the zoning, and so there's a section on that, a section on hours. Three basically says, again, that this is site plan approval and that there's uh, conditions for that. Four is the zoning compliance and the special permit requirements. And that's where most of the conditions from the draft that we've been discussing come into that. So purpose of the special permit, which we'll talk about later. Business uses, employees, vehicles, materials, firewood, parking, mitigation. Um, then we do the determination of the compliance with the standards for the grant of the special permit. Uh, and that talks about the um, without substantial detriment to the public good and without substantial derogation from the intent to the purpose of the bylaw. This is all boilerplate. And then required uh, compliance with all matters. So we have enforcement. Requires the applicant to allow access to all lots under the special permit for the purpose of inspection to the building inspector and his designee at any time. Drainage, fence and landscaping, lighting, signs, the specific rules for vehicles noise, on-site traffic loading and deliveries, outside truck traffic, street improvements, dumpsters, storage of mulch and compost, storage of fertilizer, storage of firewoods and the operations surrounding those, snow and ice operations. Then something that we haven't discussed before but in the uh, zoning is the term. Uh, the zoning allows us to do an initial term of three years or fewer. Um, and then how they would, the, then the, Zoning allows a renewal of additional terms of five years or shorter period 
and it sets up how they would apply for that renewal, which is not specified in the zoning. Um, the zoning actually specifies there are two ways that the, uh, it can be revoked. Obviously, we could choose not to renew it when it comes up in front of the planning board again. The zoning specifies that it can also be revoked by the Board of Appeals upon application by the building commissioner. Um, and uh, discussion of how it be transferred to a third party if we vote to allow that. And then the final boilerplate is the recording with the Registry of Deeds. There's also one appendix. Obviously, the plans would be attached. But there's one appendix so far, which is the stormwater operations and maintenance plan that the um, applicant submitted. So that's the basics of it. Um, I think we should start at the beginning and walk our way through. So I would start, I think uh, you all have comments on the earlier draft um, that you've seen. Uh, there are some changes from that, um, and we can go through that as we go. So if you want to really, start really with quick, I'm on the top uh, zero and two Forest Street. Oh, 24 Forest Street. Zero and 24. Yeah, thank you, Forest Street. So probably the first question becomes, since it's at the beginning there and called out in red, do we include 217 and 237 Hillside Street as well? So. Um, I guess my thinking on that, I, I had called that out here. Yeah. Um, it, it, it seems like we should include them okay. uh, on the basis that it's we're defining what each lot is being used for. So while they're included in the application, I think the inclusion in the application doesn't by inclusion necessarily give those lots any rights. Well, this is now including it in the special permit. So we are now setting the conditions. And when we get to the part where there is different language from the Board of Appeals, uh, I put that in for reference so you can see it. By granting a special permit, we may or may not choose to either keep it, modify it, or discard it, depending on what we choose to do. So right now, the, um, the applicant has stated that they use different lots for different purposes. Um, the question has been, do we limit, the question is, do we limit the landscaping uses to 270 Hillside and 0 and 24 Forest, or do we feel that they do, in fact, have reason to access the other two for the purpose of the landscaping? Because remember, that's what we're authorizing. And so we need to continue to include them. So I understand what you're saying. So, so Article 2, Section 2, has a use table that specifically designs, defines what lots are used for what purpose. Article 2, Section 2 no longer has that use oh, table. Oh, I'm sorry. That okay. is one of the changes. Okay. And that no, was after a conversation with town council. Okay. So, so then I'm going to revise my statement and say that I, I don't necessarily think they should be included. I'm just, I'm okay. just hearing what others say. My statement was based on yes. being able to include them in that use table. Yeah. Okay. No, there was a... I'll try we to look are, at both we at are the same. To, I'll look at to, both at the same time. <laughs> we are to there. There are some changes. Okay. There, we are to uh, keep to authorizing the zoning and uh, the authorizing the landscaping business. Okay. Yes. Two thirty-seven or on the other, other side of the street. Yes, they're the one that's a little bit further down. So. Were there any plans? It's the name of the hospital. Yeah, we actually uh, uh, the what, first site walk we went down to them. And I'm just trying to remember that what we saw on those plans was mulch. But was it, it was compost, related to nursery or was compost. it related to landscaping? I can't recall. So if that's a question you want to, Bill? 217 and 237 Hillside. Your views on uh, including them in the special permit allowing landscaping use on those. I think you should. And? If the truck goes in, okay. you want to be able to. And they're accessing mulch and compost. And then that allows us to regulate any activity on those sites under the landscaping business. Under the landscaping business. Okay. So you're all comfortable with that? Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I guess yes. I, I'm just, I'm comfortable with that. I'm just curious as to whether they can do landscaping. How do they store mulch over, over there under the landscaping business without having bins? I think it's more compost than mulch. Okay. The mulch is at the other site. This is just. Okay. Fair enough. We, it allows so us to govern. It allows us to, to govern them. So it's, I, I think they should be included. Okay. All right. I have a. Uh, a comment. Yes. If you look at uh, section three of, uh, or paragraph three of the zoning, 
it says a landscaping business may be located on a lot or lots in conjunction with other uses permissible in a residence district, including residential use, provided that if there shall be any involvement between the landscaping use and another use, the requirements of this subsection shall apply to that other use. Yes. So we have to, it has to be clear that there is no involvement between the uses, uh, the landscaping use and any other use. Uh, because if there is, we've got to address it. So on page 2, section 2, authorized uses, paragraph 2, 222, two, 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 um, what we have is uh, pretty much the same thing you just said, Alex. Under subsection N3, a landscaping business may be located on a lot or lots in conjunction with other uses permissible in a residence district, including residential use, an agricultural use defined by and conducted in, in accordance with MGLC 128-S1 and MGLC 40-AS3, and a greenhouse and or nursery use is defined by and conducted in accordance with Section 3, subsections 4B and 7D of the Zoning Bylaws of the Town of Milton. If there is any involvement between the landscaping use and another use, the requirements of this, actually it should say this special permit rather than subsection, this special permit shall apply to that other use. The, uh, I'm not sure that there is an agricultural use on this site. It seems to me there's a nursery use and a residential use. And if there, there, there may be an agricultural use, but there may not be. So I, I don't think that you should, you should necessarily posit that there is one. We should, we should. This is now the board, this is a we rather than a that I. So you are suggesting. I posit that. I, I, I mean, it, if there is an agricultural use on a lot, that's fine. I, then it, it can be, it can, it can remain. But it, it does seem to me that saying that there is an agricultural use on these premises is. Uh, uh, that's why the table came out. Giving away a. Uh, uh, giving away something that is, it, it you, could be, con, it could be They contested. store trees there now. This, what? This does they it store trees there now. Yeah, right. Is that could a be nursery use? The table did, which is why the table, table came out. Okay. Yes, right. exactly. What's wrong with that? Nothing. And that's why. But that's not agricultural. That's nursery. No, nursery is agricultural. No, oh, no, no, no. Isn't. We are not doing that argument here. Just but take it, that one right isn't. out. It isn't. I'm, yes. Nursery is not agricultural. No. No. No, 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 no. Not we are governing zoning. the landscaping. In any case, it doesn't say there's agricultural here. So it doesn't it's say. It says point. if it's if there. It says it may exist on the lot. It does not say that there, there is. is existence. On so it's fine the way it is. Yes. Right. Okay. So leave. All right. I, I have a question about yes. the applicant. Yes. Now the initial applicant in '67 was Robert Oldfield and Margaret T. Oldfield. Yes. And I can certainly see that. Aggie and Josh are successors, and I just wonder how, why we're including how we're including On the Oldfield one. Family LLC and the Thier Nursery Corp. And what happens if one of them drops out, or what happens if they all drop out and the Thier Nursery Corp is left and sold to someone else? That is a very good question, right. um, and I was kind of hoping later, somebody don't. would bring it up. So um, I don't know the answer to that. I, can, I know why it's in here, and I can tell you that. How the board wants to deal with it is, with it is another matter. So on the application, this is page one, the bottom paragraph. On the application from the applicants, uh, they list the owner, which is the Oldfield Family LLC, and the applicants, Josh Oldfield, Maggie Oldfield, and the Thayer Nursery Corp. Um, you are absolutely correct, of course. In 1967, the special permit was granted to Robert Oldfield and his wife, Margaret, <coughs> excuse me, Margaret T. Oldfield, the 1987 permit, and it was only to them, not to anybody else. Um, the 1987 permit added Maggie and Josh, which gives them standing to apply for this. I put everybody that was listed on the application in so that the board can discuss it. The question is a good one because the Thayer Nursery Corp and Oldfield Family LLC um, have a uh, uh, lives, as it were, as entities beyond the lifespan of Josh and Maggie. And I think this comes into play both in this initial section and then on the, um, in that last section where I talked about uh, uh, 
sold. It being sold, page 11, number 12, in the event that the land and business is transferred to a third party, said third party shall seek to continue operation of the landscaping business use, then a new special permit application shall be required on the, under the provisions of section 3N. The other possibility of doing that, of course, is not allowing the sale of the business, um, in which case you may want to you didn't say, look, it's just to Maggie and Josh, and if anybody else comes in, they don't get the... Well, isn't, that, isn't that what it, in essence, says? It's, well, you're right, you're giving them a permit. If they try to sell it to anybody else, the other people have to come back to you. Yeah. But uh, the way it by, by, by You've got the defined business. I, I mean, two, what is the business? It would be the landscaping business yeah. no, that we're But permitting. I understand, but is right. it their nursery core? Is that the yes. business? Well, but well I mean, no, no, that's no, the but, business, I mean, that's not my you answer. have to that's, say that's so. My, no, that's my... That's my affirmative, that's the question. That is the question. Is the what question. is the business that be sold? So if you are, are you granting, are we the planning board granting this solely to Maggie and Josh, who at some point may retire, stop the business whatsoever, seek to sell it to somebody else, in which they, they would have to come back in. Are you granting it to Thayer Nursery Corp as, a, as an entity who then could sell it on to somebody else, they'd still have to come back into the planning board. But my question is, who do you want to grant the special permit to? I put well, it in for everybody who, who applied. Is, who, who is do you Thayer want to Nursery Corp? Who are the people behind Thayer Nursery Corp? I mean, in, unless we knew that, we wouldn't know if they sold it or what they did it because we wouldn't know who owned it to start with. It seems to me that we'd want to allow the owners, and if, if Thayer Nursery Corp is one of is part of the ownership. That we'd want to allow the owners an opportunity um, to s to not devalue their business by not being able to sell it to somebody who would have an opportunity to come in and ask for a special permit to continue the operation of the business in the manner that it had been conducted. So it, it seems as if well, what a the, the individuals, Maggie and Josh, have children and family members. Uh, why would we put such a restriction on, on ownership if we're asking the new owner to come in and get an, a new special permit? So just to clarify, we're not putting a restriction on ownership. We're putting a restriction on who is granted the special permit. Potentially putting a restriction on who is granted the special permit. So but just, there's no... There's no <laughs> If, if the special permit is granted to people who don't own a business, I don't, I'm not sure I'm understanding the distinction. Yeah. To the, I, I'm not sure how we grant a, an individual a permit to have to for a business use. I, I think you, my understanding would be we would grant this to a business, and the business would operate in this particular case under the. Uh, the oil fields. I suppose we could restrict the business to operate under the oil fields. I, that would seem unusual to you me. You cannot grant it just to Thayer Nursery. Maggie and Josh have to have the grant as individuals because it is their ability to inherit from their father under the 87 that allowed, they, they were named under the 87 permit and the zoning requires that somebody who had Do we need to that restrict permit. it to them being the only holders? The only I'm asking if you want to. Yes. I understand. Yes. So theoretically, I mean, we could theoretically, I think this original special permit limited it to old fields and his, his heirs, so it left it as a family business, didn't it? Uh, let me pull it out. You, ha you have restricted it here, right? The, the only thing that seems to be missing Well, we to have me, it because we haven't voted on it. That's well, no, but the only thing that seems to be missing to me is who... Who the is the, the nursery corp? And after so that, we can we can have we can have that asked. We had that information at one point. I was going to look it up. You can put, you put an appendix in. It says look, you know, look at appendix A and identify who it is. But well, why do you have to? Uh, it, it says it goes to no, Oldfield. No, no. I've got the decision. Well, Bob here. Oldfield or his successors in interest. And uh, so it's not limited to a. Re relation. No. It's no, no, a no, successor no, and interest. On. It okay, says I've successors and interest. Uh, mm -hmm. So 67, 
Mm -hmm. says this permit runs to you personally, mm -hmm. including any assistance only, and shall not be assigned or transferred to any other person. Okay. 87 mm -hmm. says, it amends that to read, this permit runs to the applicants and their children personally, including any assistance only, and shall not be assigned or transferred to any other person. Okay, that's that permit. Yes. And so, so the, their, question their, is, the question is, who is the LLC and the Thayer Nursery Corp, are they successes in interest or not? Because if they're not successes in interest, then uh, um, presumably they wouldn't get a permit. Um, and then the question, it seems to me, is that what happened if Maggie and Josh both say, well, we're out of here, leaving Thayer Nursery, there's nothing to say, uh, I, I mean, does, is, is that going to be a significant event? I mean, if it is, the permit should say so. Uh, does there always have to be continuity of all four individuals sort of uh, being together, or can one drop out, et cetera? I, I mean, if they, if they can drop out, then the planning, there should be a provision that the planning board can give permission for this to happen. You said successes and interest. I, I didn't hear that. All it's I heard not, was children. Successes and interest is not in here. Then all it the is permit is children. runs the applicants and their children personally, including any assist assistance only, and shall not be assigned or transferred to any other person. So the Oldfield family is apparently is is, is, is I believe to, to be old, yeah. kind of obviously family. Well, Oldfield family LLC though it's an LLC. Right. It's a it, limited liability. True, yeah. true. So just but, but, but if we identify that. who's behind the Oldfield family LLC and their nursery corp, and if those are children, then we're all set. Okay. And if anything the, changes on here, then they should need an amendment. If one person zoning, drops out, then it needs to be amended. Zoning talks about predecessors and in interests. Yeah. Uh, hmm. That so the applicant or applicants or their predecessors and in interest on that date held a special permit or use variance. I guess it is just, uh, Maggie and Josh who are the people who hold this permit. So I guess maybe if there's good reason to include someone else, we should know it. All right. We should, so should, then we have the question on the ownership. We were provided with that information. I do not have it in front no, of me. I'm not going to ask. So I think we should ask. But then beyond that, yes. I'm just real brief. Right? Yep. On 12, the question come up, what business in the event that the land and Landscape business is transferred. Wouldn't that take care of it? Yeah. Land I'm sorry, Mark, landscape. where were you? Uh, page 11, page number 11 12. Of, uh, item 12. Five. Item 12. What if the land isn't transferred? And it should say and or. Uh, well, we're not concerned about the transfer of the land. We're concerned about the transfer of the business. But right. the business could move in a, sense, in a sense, we ain't if the business moves off site. And the, yeah, well, that's true. So the land and the business are tied together. If the, if the business as far is as our permit is concerned, right. The land yeah. and the business are tied together. So if the business is sold and moved off site, they then move we don't to worry about it. Right, exactly. Certainly certainly been the oh, if the business is sold and they stay on site, well, that's why we keep the land and the business. I would yeah. propose. I, I would. I would be uh, in favor of at least allowing the same concession that the 87 permit gives and allow this to be transferred to the children of. Yeah. Well, it, it, there's, 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 in essence, there's, there's nothing to stop them from transferring it. Well, the, they can't transfer the permit. They can ask to reapply, I suppose. I mean, I think if, if, I think the question is who it's running to. I think we've answered the question that if they transfer it, they have to right. go back for a new special permit. So that's a, section 12 covers that. The question is, would a, would, a, would a succession to the children constitute a transfer? And I'm proposing that we copy the 87 language and say that a, a, the business transferring to the children would be outside of the bounds of what a transfer would be considered here. That's fine. Okay, so they, then, they, they, then 12 would not apply to the, chil the children, children of the applicants. Nobody asks that, but I think it's very generous. generous well, I think it's the, inconsistent with the 87 no, permit, no, 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 and I think the intent was that this was a family business that we're trying to keep yeah. known. Okay. All right. So does that mean we're taking owner Oldfield family and Thayer Nursery Corp off? I think we're no, no, we've not if asked. We put the the we've amendment in our appendix in the back that says that the owners of the LLC and the owners of the Thayer Nursery are 
Okay, so an Josh, appendix that, that identifies it. Okay. You're redundant. I agree. Yep. <laughs> Fine. I think that I think well, that's a good I think solution. that there are other, and if, other, if there's another other people involved. If there's another family member in there, that's fine as well. Okay. Oh. So then Not we'll necessarily, Mike. It says he can take it says, transfer it to his family. Children. And I, I'm assuming when I say other family members, there are other children. So what we'll do is we'll add an appendix that identifies who they are because I know we've had that information, I just don't have it in front right. of me. And then we can have one more review when we get that into the next uh, iteration. All right, so the plan, which is starting on the top of page two, uh, the site plan will be the site plan and we will get a final copy of everything showing everything that we have put into here. We, we, we need to look at this, we need to know what's going to be in that plan. I, I mean, not everything that's been submitted is going to be in it. We but need, we need spec No, I understand, but we need a specification now of what the plan is. Okay. So we can see what's in the plan, what is said on the plan. I mean, an awful lot of this stuff requires that it be specified in the plan. Oh, they did and if we don't know what the plan plans. is, Pretty recently, right? I, I think we, we, we've gone through this quite a bit. I think it behooves the applicant to make sure that they've taken notes and covered everything and get it on the plan. And when they give us the plan, if it doesn't have everything we thought it would have or requested, then that'll only delay them. So, then we need so to it behooves the them now. to make it we right. We need to know what, if we're writing a permit and relying on what's written on the plan, we've got to know what's written on the sure. plan. Right. Sure, of course we do. Okay. So when we get that plan, these particular items will be clarified Everything. on that. Yes? Everything. No, 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 no. These particular. Yeah. In section yes. one, when we get the plan, the items that are in section one will dis be described based on what's in the plan. Now, later in this document, we already have some of those out there, the description of the fence, for Location, example. yeah. But this section, this authorized development is the part where we talk about the items that need to be constructed. Yes. Question as to whether we should add sprinklers, lighting, parking areas, pedestrian areas, and loading areas. As items that are being constructed? Mm. Okay, so let me get that list again. Sprinklers, lighting. lighting. An item six. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, on what? An item six on this list of what Probably we're going to expect to see put identified it under on the three. plan. I was going to yeah. put it under three, right. Yeah, exactly. But yes, I'm sorry. Now I understand the number six reference. Sprinklers, Sprinklers lighting. Sprinklers, lighting, parking areas, pedestrian paths, loading areas. This is loading what we slash storage to be areas. clarified on the plan. Yes, correct. Okay. Loading and storage areas. And storage areas. Okay. All right. I would say this. I'd <clears> say that authorized development is... You know, this is very general. All these things are very general. They don't actually have any teeth. Well, they the will teeth have come the teeth. The teeth, yes. teeth come later. Yes. Or oh, the plan will put the, some teeth into it. No, but, but Alex's point well, is that, in the document, the teeth should come it, later. It, yes? My point is this. If you look at the zoning, mm -hmm. under four, Always in favor of looking at the zoning. it says, they weren't. An application for a special permit for landscaping business use shall include the following plans, rules, and specifications. And then it lists A through S. Yes. And then in five, approval of plan, plans. All these things are supposed to be the specified yep. under these separate plans, these separate items. Yes. And they've given us the material. I think. They've given us a lot of material. And someone's got to go through it and take these various out items out of that material so that we know what each of these plans is. Mm -hmm. Then it says, as part of the special permit, the planning board shall approve plans, rules, and specification which the board deems adequate under each of the foregoing paragraphs. Insofar as the material submitted by an applicant with the application for a special permit may be inadequate or fail to advance the purpose of this subsection, the planning board shall require its revision. So what I'm suggesting is rather than send it back to them and saying we don't like this, first of all, we've got to know what the various plans are for these subparagraphs, And then we should review them 
and we should specify whether each is adequate because that's what the zoning says we have to do. So and it seems to me that this special permit should be structured to follow the zoning. So if you start under zoning compliance, section four on page three, you will see those categories and then section five, the conditions under there do in fact follow those. Now some of those were repeated in both four and seven. So rather than repeat them multiple times, I have grouped them where they seem to be appropriate. But all of those categories have been covered in this special permit. They Without may be covered, but do we have the plans they've submitted, like the rules for the operation of the business that they were supposed to submit? So do we have those rules? What we have is incorporated from their application into this and has been pulled by Tim and myself from the materials that they gave us. What we have Where are is the rules? Well, let's see. That they have. 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 I want the rules that they have established for the various things required by the zoning. So we have the activity. The um, uh, the hours are in here. What they're allowed to have do. Have they established their uses, that as a hours? rule? We're establishing as a rule. We, no, it, that's not what the zoning says. We, if if that's what the zoning said, we could do that. But that's not what it says. So we've got the employees. It says a list of the vehicles. rules proposed to be imposed by the special permit to ensure that vehicles and equipment are shut off and not idling. Yeah. Uh, that employees do their work efficiently and quietly. Yeah. Earphones shall be required. CD players yep. are in use. Yep. Loudspeakers and amplified music shall not be used in business so, operations. So noise on page nine under seven. Landscape equipment, 7A, landscape You're equipment shall not be... you through this. I'm not. I've, I it, have it's supposed to be in them. one place. Alex, the zoning has it in multiple places. I have grouped it... It has it in two places. Right, which is repetitive. I have grouped it so that everything that deals with noise is under noise. Everything that deals with on-site traffic and loading and deliveries is under that section. Everything that deals with the rule for a vehicle is under that section and is not scattered throughout. So question? Mary? Yes. Uh, where we are referring to a set of documents, um, like the plans, right? Yeah, the plans? Um, yeah. On two. Okay, page. yes. We're going to refer to um, actual sheets with dates, right? I mean, that's where the yes. XXX yes, is. Yes, that would go in. I guess if you remember... Uh, did we put the uh, set of plans under the? I didn't bring the draft order of conditions with me. One of the one of the orders of conditions we had actually listed out every single plan and what had to be in it. So, so I'll put that you back could, in this draft. You, you, the, the one very simple thing we could do is what I think you had to do. We could cross reference here where it says parking. Yeah. You could say not C, but just drawing. S12, right. whatever. Yeah, and I had actually done that at one point. I took uh, it back out. Not again. everything's applicable. You yeah. know, uh, fence, fence, right. for our X. But, yeah. I mean, and then also to. Um, you know, the fence is supposed to be shown on a plan. It is. And the landscaping is supposed to be shown around the fence on it's a plan. It is. It is. Right. It is. It is. It is. We've received a plan that has it on there, and it will be because we have to attach it to the special permit. So, so, but and it shows if, the fence at the right elevation, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is the most current that's, one, but that's, I, was gonna, yeah. that's, I think that's, that's an old say, one. Yeah. Yeah. Have we? I know I, we have seen. I got, got right. plans, but have we seen the final plan that they think is going to be part of this? But, the applicant right. requested that we tell them when we were ready for them yeah. to do that. I think we're getting ready. Well, they, I, I think, think we're ready. Well, they, yeah. they could we take this, they could go and fix the plan and I say, does it mean what they did here? Because yes. if it doesn't, we're going to tell them and as it's going to delay yes. them, not us. I think okay, you're correct. Okay, so then, yes. if I may I continue. Yes. That's all I meant earlier. It'd be, be their best interest to make sure the plan meets what's in it. Great. Oh, I agreed. Um, but the other thing is, if we wanted to go back and ask them to update certain things, like, here, there's a restatement of operations and mitigation plan stated June 15th. If to Alex's point, he wants to be able, and I don't know if I'm misinterpreting you, Alex, you can correct me if I am, but if it's supposed to come from the applicant, then we could, just as we refer to drawings, we could go back and refer to particular um, uh, materials that were submitted to us instead of having to restate them all in the language of the permit. Is that true? 
if these are more detailed, these might be even more detailed of what's contained in here. Just as we say, the, as according to the plan parking, we give a little description, but then we refer back to the plan. If we did the same thing on mitigation measures, we give a description, then we refer, refer back to the actual documents that you were submitted. Reference appendix letter of as appendix. an appendix. Yes, there's yeah. one in the back you could, Yeah, you so could, you could do the same right. thing if if that covers I, I Alex's just question be, of a, or point about needing. I just to be have careful these. that you know it be in some kind of letter or long terminology that it's what we're looking for. It doesn't. Yeah, I mean, they, well, I guess. I mean, the, it is, it, I've been confused at times that they, they're originally going to put up an eight-foot fence with, with a six-foot panel. Right, that's the issue. Because they're they're six foot high. One. Now, now it's, it's two four-and-a-half-foot four panels. So I would hope when they come back with a drawing that it labels the fence as an eight-foot high fence like they have in the past, the same materials, yeah. labels the materials in some kind of legend. Shows a section. Says there's two panels, labels the panels as coming from such and such a producer or, you know, manufacturer. Put some so, specs behind that, and, and they, that's what we get. And so they have to show the the buildup of the wall. That should be on the plan. Yeah. Okay, so then that's if we the if we said if we went through this, if I may, yeah, um, and uh, the f it says number one, fence sound attenuation related landscaping. So you so what we could say then is not only refer back to where you've written it in further detail, but to say then ask the applicant. In order to define this on your plans, we'd like to see it not only uh, in horizontally where it's going to go on the drawing, but we would like to see if you if you want to see confirmation a section through a particular point of it where it shows uh, overlapping the if there's a berm and if there's a you know the relationship of that and then the height and where the acoustic is being uh, applied. So we can ask for that and then they can submit that to you know, before this is actually finalized, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, I don't think we could finalize this without agreeing that we're looking at a drawing that we say, that's what we look for, that's right. what we're so asking as we for, work, that's what we intended. So, instead of, so to be very clear, though, about what we're asking the applicant to provide, if we go through and we say item one, here's what we'd like to see, item two, here's what we'd like to see on the plan, so and, and work our way through. Be, that is in here. I think it is. I think it okay, is. Okay, so then we move then, to, you're saying uh, it's on page, page seven. seven. That's I read through this probably in an hour or two before I showed up here, and I, I think everything we've talked about. Maybe, maybe you could get more sure specific. Tonight. We can yes. walk through it and say that and talk about it, but I think it's all pretty much covered. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm making through. So um, in the previous special permits that we've done, we've had this section on authorized development, which gives a sort, sort of short pricey of what actual construction will be done and then the details have been later in the special permit which is how I set it up so that's why I'm trying to move us through I'm sorry I know details. you're trying to move us through but can I go back I have no, a question absolutely. for go you back. Yes. in the preamble on oh, page in the preamble. two good stuff preambles yes it says the proposed conditions required by this special permit shall be constructed as shown on a plan containing XX sheets yes um, I've I'm suggesting that we add uh, shall be constructed as shown and uses limited to areas depicted on. This Ooh. may be in the wrong location, but I but, but I wanted to make sure that we're referencing the fact that the areas shown on the plan are in fact part of this part of the requirements yep. here. Is, is that does that throw a monkey wrench in the lots of land that are across the street? I don't think so. Uh, no, because we have we have drawings for those. We have, we have yeah, drawings so for those. There were plans for that. Are they, they, those should yes, be I continued to. Yeah. I agree. There's, there's, there's been a few around. <laughs> now, that actually brings up something else, which is originally um, in some of my earlier drafts that I, I sort of kicked around on my computer I before doing something that was useful enough to send out. Um, I had, uh, I had mentioned each individual plan when I got to it. So, you know, when it was that landscaping, I mentioned the landscaping plan. When we were on the parking, I mentioned the parking plan. And actually, I think some of these are still in here. When I was looking at older special permits, it just said all of the sheets are referred to as the site plan. And then throughout the special permit, it just referred you back to the site plan. Would you prefer, I think what I'm hearing is that you would prefer to have it reference the specific sheet. So if we're talking about parking, rather than just say, go look at the site plan, You'd like it to reference the parking plan on the sheet. Does that make? Is that? We I need that to know clearly? what the sheets that encompass this plan are. Yes, absolutely. And and they need to be listed. Do we need a list of the sheets so that we can 
each have a copy of the sheets and be able to look at the sheet in conjunction with reading the permit. Yep, because that's how it works. Well, your, your page two, where you have the XX. Yeah. Th this should say, and I'm just off the cuff using letters, well, numbers, got the, the terminology. Name, the sheet. This should yeah. say drawing sheet S1 through S6. Exactly. Right. And you see but in red, when we get it has to parking, the sheet. It should yes. say S2. Right. In, but, and in my mind, unless I'm misinterpreted or saying something that's not even necessary to say, it's, it's going to be all right to say parking, CS2, fence, CS2, lights, yeah. CS3. Yeah, if, they, yes, right. if, they've, if they've put multiple things on there, yeah, I think that's fine. And it's clear enough. Then. Yes. We're talking about parking. Parking is depicted on S2 or whatever, and, and we're good. It, yeah. it seems to me that if we have the plan that we're going to require revisions to, which is the way it will work, I gather, that you've got to change this so that it is in accordance with what we want. We need to. We need to. Have, we need the sheets. We yes, need to yeah. know the sheets. I don't think there's any. I'm, I'm hoping the next time that they give us those sheets, well, no, everything is we, going to apply. They have given us the material. We are now determining which parts of that material are going to be attached to this permit, and some of the plans are going to have to be changed. But we have to specify the changes on the plans that we want, mm -hmm. and we have to know what the plans we're looking at are. Right. There's no disagreement with you. All right. Well, we're, again, we're on we the don't same page know that, that yet. We're on the same page that we need those. the engineer was still doing things with the drainage in conjunction with the abutters engineer. Ned at one point in time did say, rather than reiterate, 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 when we get near the end, then we'll revise the sheets. Right. We're now at the point where we have. Like I said about the six foot, and the, uh, pardon me for interrupting, <laughs> right. but the six foot and the four foot, yeah. now we're to a point, this is what we're looking for. Right. So take the sheets, tells update them how to revise their plans. Exactly. <laughs> get it to us as, as soon as possible so we can work it in conjunction with this and so, get to a conclusion. But may I make a suggestion? <laughs> for yes. those plans uh, that we have, I don't think they're numbered. They have titles. They should be numbered. So I'd like yeah. to have them numbered. In, in, yeah. And I'd only suggest. The chair that you suggest the applicants <laughs> that they give us any literature they have specifications on the uh, the sound attenuation material. We we, we have, have all that. We it's just, have we've it. got a I huge just, pile, but we've got several <laughs> different different <laughs> kinds of attenuation. Well, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking well, for the we one have they to want choose. to use. X. I believe, we Bill, you sent choose. me the final sound attenuating. All right, anything else on one, authorized development? I think we're all in agreement. We would like the plans now. All right, two, authorized uses. So authorized uses, the number one authorizes it based on section N2 of the zoning bylaw and how it defines a landscaping business. And you'll see the green is directly from the, um, the zoning. Uh, subsection N3 we've already talked about, so we can skip over that. Uh, I mean, sub, uh, number two, three. Um, this is the bit where it combines what uh, the zoning allows the landscaping business to do with what we say it may do. I think the biggest thing in here that came up last time was the de definition or how we deal with the idea of landscape ornamentations. So the applicant had provided us with a fairly broad definition. Uh, we had kicked around a couple of ways of limiting that to something that would actually be installed by a landscaper as part of a landscaping design. Was it fixed? Was there a wait? So I'm looking for feedback from the board on that. Well, you might define it. it you don't. It's been defined, it's fixed, and installed by a landscaping. Then you know, it's like, the next question the is, do you, do you, is that enough? Do you the board, where do you see no fixed? So you guys, uh, so but you guys, I mean, board members last time. Had the building about inspector has to be able to look at something and yeah. decide whether or not it's a fixed landscape ornamentation. And if you leave this very vague language here, he's not going to. He's not going to have a clue. In, Either, fact, it, in yep. fact, anything in this permit that isn't apparent to the building inspector is not going to happen. We weren't provided with a list. We, have, we were given a definition of landscape, of landscape ornamentations. It was an extensive list. And to accept that particular definition would effectively 
allow the retail operations. Or it would permit retail operations because it was an extensive list of things that do not necessarily require a landscaper to install. So the question is, do we allow it at all, um, landscape ornamentations at all? Do we attempt to find some sort of definition for it or what? I have a problem with the word um, ornamentation. Okay. Um, I'm going to look up. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to look at Please. Webster's for Why a don't you look at the Webster's? But the zoning does contain that word. So if, uh, if the board asks, then it I'll does. recognize. It does but contain the word. Landscape ornamentation. It doesn't define it. It may be authorized. Yes. Right. Maybe. So and it, it, does, it, and it may does not, not right. also. Yeah. So a fixture is something securely and usually permanently attached or appended as to a house, apartment, building. Um, so I think one of the things I proposed last time was changing the word ornamentation to fixture. Okay. But what about um, if you had, let's say, a stone fountain or a stone ornament, which needs a bobcat kind of delivery? I had originally been thinking about that. Is there a weight or a size requirement? I mean, that's that generally, that could be easily part of a landscape installation. Yeah. Um, and it's not permanently fixed because it weighs so much. So I guess my question on something like that is from a landscaping operation perspective. We're allowing them to sell these things, right? Okay. Just trying to figure out if they need to be on site. You'd mentioned that before as a possibility, I think, in passing is uh, in yeah, one I of the comments. I was thinking that we couldn't figure it out. Something that they could plant in your yard. But, you know, should they have, have all over the... It's of a fountain. I mean, do they... Do we limit them to a display area? Where you can order it, but they can't actually... It has to be shipped to the, to the job site. It's can provide tools and labor. It it's seems to me that if it is part of the deal, the landscape That's deal... You get a landscape design and say, you know, it has a fountain in it. Uh, right. Then they can, in fact, do it if mm -hmm. it's part of the uh, landscape design that they're under contract to perform. And uh, so, would that include a sitting a seating area? A what? Furniture in a seating area. Well, I, I, I mean, that is when you get a, uh, your porch furniture uh, um, and your. Maybe a concrete bench, but not a. Yeah, I mean, that was the yeah, other thing. I was just, I was just starting to go there on stone. Bench. So I was just starting to go there with with the fountain and maybe this bench. Maybe it's, maybe you have to maybe you have to limit them to materials, landscape ornamentation mm -hmm. of that's fixtures or made of a stone material. A natural material. Natural. A natural yeah, or that's or good. composite. Natural could include oh, like a wood that. bench. A natural what? material. Natural could include a teak bench or a teak dining set. Composite. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> So you're going to work on that? I think we're working on it right now, yeah, Alex. Right. What about things like um, Steel you know, a trellis? Um, is that is something included as fencing? fencing right? Okay. So there are like. Although is that even in here? Fencing no. is not in there. So that's a steel fire here. pit. Fencing not allowed on here. Steel fire pit isn't movable. As opposed Indeed. to a one that's built with stone. So then, so then we go back to the fixed versus movable. Once you put it in, it's not moving. But is it? Well, unless can it I can I pick it up and put it in my truck? Can you say immobile, fixed, immobile. I mean, it's, it's, it seems to be saying the same thing, but you know, a fixed is something I could stab in the ground and say it's fixed there. But it's but that would be mobile. So I could just take it out and move it. If you could say stone or concrete, that would uh, limit things a little bit. Stone or concrete landscape ornamentations. So fixed stone or concrete well, I, landscape ornamentations. I might suggest putting metal in there as well. Except yeah, metal I just get, full you, you get, you get your, aluminum chairs, your, uh, aluminum. Don't you, know. you have a, don't you have a steel ornamentation in your, to the right of your driveway? I don't like no, the it's, a, it's supposedly no, the ornamentation brass. is the real problem because it's ornamentation metal. becomes decorative. It is right, metal. Exactly. It may be a sign. But that's another but discussion. That's another. You put a size on it, so it's something that's of more substantial size. Well, that's what I'm trying to do by size. Or weight, like you were saying. Yeah. 
But I think size too, a, because if you need a truck to deliver it, if you need well, equipment it, to we, install it, I mean that starts to become something that's different than the uh, flamingo. I think that was mentioned at one meeting. Yeah. I don't, I don't I think pick up a steel. I don't pick up a steel fire pit and put it in the back seat of my car. So it requires a bobcat. But or it's still, you, I, can, I, you can pick it up in your pickup, but you can't pick it up in. You can go small. Put it in you your wagon. Like I like small I like my immobile because if you have a steel fire pit, you, 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 I know what you're saying, but you still can move it. If I put in a stone fire pit in the patio, well, that's a fix. You can you could move it, but it's it'd be taken off a lot. So did you want to think about landscape fixtures instead let's, let's of ornamentation? Let's just say fixtures, and then they can put the uh, uh, they can put a concrete they can you know put a concrete base and then a layer of adhesive and then it becomes a fixture. All right, so that it becomes it's a defined theme. real estate term. It's something that I think the building inspector can rely on and interpret. It's replacing the word ornamentation with fi with so fixtures. and it would be and landscape fixtures needed to implement a specific landscape design. So mm -hmm. striking the word fixed and putting land and then replacing ornamentations with, with fixtures. fixtures. Yep. Okay. There's going right. to be a gray area, but it's 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 limiting Still the gray like area. It's right. limiting the gray area substantially. Still like my immobile fixture. <laughs> Well, we'll keep that under advisement, Mike. It's a good one. So, all right, four. So noted. No business activities or sales other than those identified in three above are authorized by the special permit. Um, so we had looked at saying, well, this thing is authorized by that special permit and that thing is authorized by that other special permit. And you were all concerned about naming specific authorized activities. Um, so this says, this sort of does it in the negative. It says, here's what we've defined in three. That's all we're authorizing. We're not authorizing anything else. That's it. So it's belt and suspenders, but. but. Yes? If there is an involvement with a nursery use, then if we don't allow it, the nursery use gets blown out of the water. We're not. In other words, they can't sell mulch to their. Uh, uh, We've just told them they can sell mulch. It's up here. Isn't and, that and three? We and, say that they can the sell mulch. And the nursery can sell mulch too. Isn't, That's under the nursery. Isn't? Don't you see that there is a similarity of uh, of. I of, see that there's I, a similarity. I, I see the I don't point. Think. I think the concern. I I think. Where Alex is is this where you're going? Is where, do they have to have separate mulch bins? For the nursery. We've for limited the quantity of the mulch. That I they understand, can have but from the standpoint yeah. of, of Alex's point, we don't want to end up in a situation here where they use the same bin to service the, the nursery and the landscaping business, and suddenly we've aggregated the businesses. And So, how do you want to deal with that? Well, I think that if you're saying with this materials limit, yeah. that it's only for the landscaping no, that's business. Total you, materials limit. Well, okay. So, I, that's that's all they get to have on site, or earlier in the year. That rather. has to be clear at the, later then. Yeah, right? and we'll make sh make sure we when we get there, it's clear. The the materials are going to be handled because sure, sure. of this commonality. Yeah. In accordance with the procedures that we establish here, Agreed. all the materials are going to be handled that way. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I agree. Yeah, okay. I don't have a. I don't have. I'm just saying that they can't sell. We've said that they can sell these things. We are not authorizing any other sales. They may have sales that they can do, like for example, Christmas trees uh -huh. under the nursery. But we are not authorizing those sales under the special permit. That's, that's all I'm trying that's to say. Right, right where I went with number four, Christmas trees. Yeah, and if this language doesn't make that clear, then we need to figure out another way. But. I tried it the other way first and got pushback that that's not how you want no. to do it. So this is I the think, two. I think so what you said, buy I, this I, special I, permit. That's yeah. I, I think it's yeah. I agree. Okay. I think th I think this language is fine. But you just said something else that that was intriguing, and that's just the idea that this is all the material they can have on site. I mean, not on site. I meant to say annually. That was a slip of the top. That's fine. That's annually, annually, but how are we, how? Can we we'll say get that? there. I'm thinking as We've you said, we we'll get there. there. It goes further. But uh, we're not enforcing those other uses. Well, we but they, have, they have told us what their 2012 levels are for, for materials on site. Not so we for can, we get, no, that's for the whole thing. That's okay. what it's. So we, that's I think, what we asked them for. I think we, we probably have to add a, a little bit. We have to bit just tweak that. that. Yeah, we, yeah, that's fine. Exclu Absolutely. Exclusive of other businesses. 
Yes. Inclusive. 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 Yes. Right. Inclusive. This is all you get to buy for both businesses. I would suggest yes. under number four that they can sell landscaping services. You mean under number three? No, we said four. They can sell landscaping. Yeah, landscaping services might be a good thing. It might be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's their business. Might, you know. Landscaping. Nice to, so, why don't we make that A and then we'll bump everything else down? So. Yeah. Don't the, the, are those business activities does it, in, in, in the does zoning? It like, no, they can do it. Well, it says that it's a business concern that operates to construct, install, and maintain lawns, trees, yards, shrubs, gardens, patios, related grounds, and other outdoor areas owned by other. But Alex has a valid point that we should, in fact, say that they can sell those services. Installations and services. Yeah. Why do we need number four? Hang on. I think I'm you, you explained that was a that was a. Had double negative or something, but it's a uh, belt and suspenders. Yeah, I know you said that. Now I was trying to figure out a different way to say it, but it's just to say that this this is all where under this special permit. If you think it's too much, what? if you think well, my three concern, is clear I'm, enough, I, well, fine. I'm concerned about what Alex just raised. I don't want to get in a situation where somebody says that okay. the landscaping and the nursery businesses are happening at the site are being commingled, and therefore the landscaping regulations yes. apply. Yeah. And now our special permit for landscaping says, as Alex pointed out, you can't have a nurse, you can't have anything but landscaping. No, that's not what it says. All it says is that this special, this permit, special permit is only authorizing the things above. So okay. I'm saying anything about that's any fair. of the other that's businesses, fair. and we've said now think about it over you know that's between fair. now and the next meeting, and if we still have issues, we can come back and revisit it. I don't have a problem with that. But so. this, if there's any involvement between the landscaping services and the nursery uses, then if it's not covered in this permit, it's not covered. And then the nursery is out of luck. No. Yes. No. Yes. No, because the involvement includes things like operations, and maybe that's what we should make clear when we talk about involvement is that it's the operations, the involvement uh, is the operations of the two businesses. So things like storage of malt, storage of fertilizer, how the trucks move around on the site. This special permit governs all of that, whether it's nursery or landscape. On, 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 contrary to what you said, this says loading and use of noisy equipment for the landscaping business is not allowed on Sunday. Yes. But they can take a piece of equipment and load me a bucket of mulch in the back of my truck on Sunday. Yes, and in fact, that's, 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 that I believe is true. Because but what Alex was just saying is if we don't cover it in here, then they can't do it in the nursery. I think they can do it on the nursery. Well, that brings us actually to number five. So let's segue to that and then use I'm it. Okay. Because okay. number five is the landscaping business hours. If you remember in the special permit, it allows us to limit the nursery loading and use of noisy equipment on Sundays to 10 to 3. And that had been in the order, draft order of conditions that we've been looking at. Some pushback saying we don't want to touch nursery. So I've taken it out and I've only had the landscaping business hours in here. Now the special, uh, the decision in 2001 defines specific hours that they can use. Um, I guess the question, is, and you can see that in the red text there, is how do you want to deal with that 10 to 3 of nursery? On Sunday. On Sunday. Do you want to include it in the special no. permit? Do you want to include the other nursery hours in the special no. permit? Or do you just want to have the landscaping hours landscaping. only? Landscaping. Landscaping. The special permit deals with the nursery hours. How are you going to determine this? I, I, I mean, mean it's you? fine. If, the, the the, if you say it, if you say it, and how is the building inspector going to figure this out? reality is the building inspector is not going to be there on Sunday anyway. But um, the uh, we've designated that there's two vehicles that can be used. We've, I've added language to say that they have to be inscribed or, or engraved in such a way that it makes clear that you know vehicle one and two are, are being used for those purposes. If you get a exclusively picture. Exclusively for the landscape. Exclusively purposes. for the landscape. What happened if vehicle two breaks down? Well, then you're going to have to get it fixed. And, and and bobcats so the building is identified as such in Article 4.5 is the only bobcats allowed to operate on Sundays. 
Why, why can't you just say no more than two vehicles can operate? That's Sunday. another op option, as you could say, that That's only better. two vehicles at any given you're time not, can operate. Now you're regulating more than the landscaping use with this permit if you do that. Yeah, but that's because there's an involvement between the two, and the zoning says you can regulate them. But if you look at the, what the, uh, the bobcats, look at the bobcats, the Which use page? of the bobcats, uh, four and five. Yeah. The nursery bobcats and the landscaping bobcats have an exactly similar description yes, of do. vehicle use. Yeah, as do the. Um, <laughs> I would I would suggest that there was uh, uh, there would seem to be a overlap. <laughs> There's also um, a nursery trailer one has pickup and, and delivery and, and, of plant material, and landscaping trailer two just delivers I plant material. But in any event, since we're yes. limiting these all these vehicles, whatever they're used for, as being the vehicles that can be used on the site. So, so no matter what or any number of walkouts they use on Sunday, the worst they could use them is between 10 and 2. If we put 10 and, yeah, 10 no, and not 3. Re, not actually. relative to what we're doing, relative right. to a special permit that already exists. No, the special permit allows uh, it to run Sundays 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Oh. So if we limit the nursery, we're creating a, a we're using the special permit zoning. Uh, under 3N to create an additional limitation for the nurseries on Sundays. Right now they have 9 to 6. So, for bobcat use. So the question is, do we leave it as 9 to 6 or do we limit it to We're 10 back to, to hours again, sorry. We're back to hours again. Vehicles. Well, they're kind of related. If you, if you play with the vehicle issue for one second, say they get a new bobcat. Mm -hmm. Do you realistically want that new bobcat to work at the nursery. But if you're replacing the landscape bobcat, you're out of luck. Because the new one's going to be a lot quieter than the older one. So realistically, you want no more than two bobcats so that when the first one goes down, you know that from now on, they'll be getting the new one at the nursery. Well, you want it used for both. So only that used is to, really quiet. There's no reason they can't re-identify re the vehicles with a can of spray paint. I mean, the way I have this written under rules for vehicles on, I don't know what page it is in this, in this version, but I... I it's got a page number. Uh, it's page... I, I hear you with the numbers, but, but they can only run eight, two eight, at any eight. one time. You cannot have three of them going. Why? Uh, at three o'clock on, or two o'clock on a Friday afternoon, why not? You have landscaping and nursery business going. At the same not time. on a weekend. A weekend no, on a weekend, I agree with. So Sunday. my point is, I under rules for vehicles, I have Bobcats three and four identified as such in four point four. The only Bobcats allowed to operate on Sundays, Bobcat three and four will be engraved or otherwise permanently identified, visible to passive buyers. Well, you can do one and two as well, but all Bobcats will be engraved or otherwise permanently identified, visible to passerby's buyers, identifying them as such. You're limited to two vehicles. I know it's complicated, but. I'm, I'm very much in favor of having this be a landscaping permit. I, I would prefer not to commingle the two. That's my opinion. And you will have to have a nursery operator in your uh, nursery bobcat and a landscape operator in your landscape bobcat under your viewpoint. In my viewpoint, you can have, you can use the bobcat in either operation as it will obviously be used. Uh, and operated by either a nursery or a landscape uh, employee as, in fact, uh, whoever is available will load the truck. And if it's a load of mulch for a customer down the street, then it's a nursery load. And if it actually is going to a landscape job, then it'll be a landscaping job. But uh, uh, they're not, not going to say, hold everything, get the... Uh, get uh, the, uh, but maybe they should have to. We're, we're trying to create an enforceable document. I don't know the how you do, I don't know how you That is it. totally what we're you're suggesting is unenforceable. Do you think the, you you think the building or inspector or is going to go out and look and I see think, what I, I Bob Cat is doing what? Yeah. Uh, if, we, if we add 10 to 3 here, you're telling me that further restricts it. It, take, it takes precedence over the 9 to 6. If with, um, yeah, it's a... Uh, 
hang on, it's E, let me find out which E should be 70. 70, 70, um, there shall be no loading or use of noisy equipment on Sundays, provided that use of equipment for the loading of plant and nursery materials, which are not sold as part of landscaping services, shall be permissible between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. on I, Sundays. I, I think we should add that in here. And that will take precedence, you're telling me, over the 9 to 6 in the special permit. Then I think there could be a court case on it, I suppose, but it should do. I so, should. wait, I want to try and understand. If this says not allowed here, then it, under the I, I was saying, under the Board of Appeals, then they're still allowed on the nursery side to do the hours that are allowed under that permit. Is that right? Or is well, this saying not allowed at all? How can we uh, dictate what's already I, allowed I thought, under a different I thought permit? Please, the stuff in green refers to the landscaping business. Right. We can totally dictate that. Yes. That is our right. Right. The question becomes the nursery. Our zoning says 10 to 3. The ZBA's uh, decision, uh, the 2001 decision, which was as a result, which is being appealed, by the way, um, says Sundays 9 a.m. to 6. So, you, but that's it, it, for nursery, nursery business. Well, actually, that's for everything. Where our right. precedent okay. for I landscaping see. takes, okay. right. takes right. No, no, precedence. So I think that, that 10 to 3 should be net. The reason being. And I understand all the conversation that's going on, and I, and I, you know, I virtually agree with both sides, but it, it does become, you know, the, 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 my, beyond what we've discussed already, example is, all right, it's Sunday. Is it landscape or, landscaping or nursery? Well, there's another landscaper that's coming in to pick up a load of mulch. Right. That's nursery business. It's not my landscape business. Right. I agree with that. So now it's totally out of the water. So. The only way we can put any teeth in anything, like you say, for a uh, building inspector or anything is 10 to 3. Now it's 4 o'clock, there's all kind of equipment going off, can't do it. Mm -hmm. Simple. Right. And we can Makes do sense. it because the zone says we morning, can do it. I'm trying to sleep on Sunday, equipment go, can't do it. Right. So we're spending a lot of time on vehicles but right now we're just we should be probably just at least nailing down the hours because I don't yeah we have agreement on that so just so you know on Monday to Friday I use the earlier hour that you guys had suggested but I kept the later hour for Saturday so Monday to Friday at 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday it's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. which is what you had wanted to do um, deliveries stay they, they are what they are emptying well, the dumpsters. Uh, deliveries are deliveries in and deliveries out, and I think Agreed. they've got to be they've got to be described. Okay. And emptying the dumpster, what about delivering the dumpster? Uh, I don't know that it's delivery. I don't, I don't I think, think we should live with deliveries from nine to two. You don't Monday you through don't? Friday. Not deliveries in, yes. But not deliveries out. I think we need to. I agree. Deliveries I think we need out to, are. are and, and the wood operation I think we needs, need to add it, needs, to be clear. Uh, you, you've got to address that because most of the, an awful lot of the trucks are going to be carrying wood out. So are you, what's, what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that there should be a provision for, for about the wood operation. So then my question becomes, do you want those hours to be different, the delivery of wood to be different hours? from any other delivery? And if so, what hours would you want? Because right now, there would I be thought, a delivery. I thought we, they had specified when about I think, I think you need when the wood would come in. Okay. In's fine, 9 to 2. Okay. The out. Fine. So what do you want to do for out? 8 to 4. you got to get in the morning to. But my opinion is that yeah, I should really be so it should be the same as the landscaping business. That's my opinion. Well, I think that the wood operation, if the wood is ordered, they should make it a practice. It should be a rule in their rule book, which we haven't seen yet, uh, or we haven't prepared yet, uh, but we will, uh, that they will do everything humanly possible to deliver the wood out between the same hours as it comes in. So you're saying 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You would deliver wood Monday out. through Friday. And, Monday through and, Friday. and I know that they, they say that there are special circumstances. And I'm not on board with the special circumstances, you, you, but we're not at that section yet. You just, you just you're not in and at what section? But I don't I think we did a whole section on the log for special exceptions. What were the requested hours 
uh, for these. The, what we have here is the green in green is. So the requested hours were seven at four, um, and this is the loading and use of noisy equipment. The requested hours were seven to six and eight to five on Saturday. Okay, and so then deliveries? The deliveries are the deliveries. I mean, they, are the these the requested? Or no, no? The, the zoning doesn't give an option on that's deliveries. That's deliveries in. That's right. deliveries in is what you're zoning saying. Zoning does not specify two. between in and out. I see. All right, so what we're saying so, is that the deliveries we in the to? are the 9 to 2. Do we, can we add deliveries out? I am that's, looking. That's really well, so it says uh, on on-site, this is 7E again, on-site traffic loading and deliveries. It says... Um, Deliveries to the business to the business premises shall be scheduled so as to occur on weekdays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. and the operator shall take reasonable steps to assure compliance. We do not have any specifications on delivery out. It doesn't say that we can, and it does not say that we can't. Do you see what I mean? It doesn't. It doesn't mm -hmm. give us a limitation on that. But of course we can. Well, yeah. All I was it thinking. Well, it doesn't say we say, can't. So it doesn't. Can. It doesn't give a positive or a negative. Brian, all I was thinking is not. And I know you said just or if the landscaping hours out, but I was. I'm just okay thinking, with limiting the wood hours, by the way. But if you if you say yeah, I can make a delivery at seven o'clock in the morning, you, you, you know I kind of try to put things in a practical sense. That means there's guys there at quarter or six loading trucks and moving things around so they can get out of there at seven. <laughs> Well, so there's a, just so you guys know, um, that the, needs to there's be a, limited that they can't do that. But they're not uh, allowed to do that. So you know. just so you know, oh, no, I, I mean, Alex, it, it should. There is a spe specification above that that says enforceable procedures shall be specified for trucks making deliveries and for the on-site operation of the trucks and other equipment used in the business. That does not limit the deliveries for in or out. So I would say that we can make. Of course we can. A limitation. And we can say you can't load them up at quarter of six. And uh, um, so, what do you want to do? I I think that I want a definition of noisy equipment because all equipment is noisy, uh, and uh, I want a definition that the building inspector can say, this is noisy equipment. This is not noisy equipment. Uh, I, I thought we already got to that point. The building inspector said he's not getting a noise meter, so he's ain't going to. So well, all right. I think you know that noisy why? equipment is a bobcat and a chainsaw and a leaf blower and all of I those. I think that's and fine. If I mean, if that's what we want to say, yeah, we're done. bobcats, chainsaws, leaf blowers, generators. I mean, that's all. I can't just say landscaping business. Well, that's what we did say. Loading for period. landscaping business. Or Take out use of noise equipment. Why is there anybody landscape. doing anything okay. before 7 a.m.? Right. They're not open yet. That's true. Right. They don't know, the sales office doesn't open until 7. The landscaping doesn't open. Well, because so. of Sunday, it's not allowed at all. Well, that's fair. The sales office is open on Sunday, but we were saying that they can't do loading or loading or unloading. Landscaping Just business. Just landscaping I, business. I mean, oh, loading or unloading. But you've that, got, that a, you've does... got a little problem here in that you're saying that you can do certain nursery operations um, we're independently and we're not controlling them except certain nursery operations we are controlling. Um, that's what I'm trying to not do. Well, I understand that, but if we don't control nursery operations, we might as well just give up right now because we're no, never going to come up with a permit that is enforceable in any we, we, reasonable we, manner. Where are we missing the boat? We, we just we decided, or some of us decided, or we thought we'd add loading and use of noisy equipment slash landscaping business on Sunday from 10 to 3. No, 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 no. We can't do landscaping business. It's nursery 10 to 3. Well, Sunday but, but 10 it's, to but, 3, but I, I it's, think, pro I think it's these prohibited are, on Sunday I'm, I'm, by the zone. I'm agreeing with you in an indirect way. It says lo loading and use of noisy equipment. Right. Dash landscaping business. I don't. I don't think it necessarily. Oh, because because it was loading and use of noisy equipment. Dash landscaping. Loading and use of noisy equipment. Dash nursery. So the nursery part port, part is what is allowed from ten to three. Well, then get rid of landscaping business and put lo loading and use of noisy equipment. Ten to three. But then you're now allowing both the landscaping and the nursery to operate from 10 to 3 on Sunday. Is that your yeah. intent? But the zoning specifically prohibits yeah, the, the landscaping, landscaping from operating on Sunday. Well, we've got to put another line in then. Yeah, that's uh, what we'd the, have to uh, do. Zoning? 
No, 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 no. line in here. Oh. The timetable. All right. So you can point, leave the line loading and use of noisy equipment on Sunday 10 to 3, and then add another line, landscaping business on Sunday, not allowed. Okay. All right. So we have one wanting to add the nursery. I mean, we have at least one who doesn't want to There's still ambiguity that's going to happen, but at least you can say you can't do anything before 10. Or period. after 3. We can start saying if you get five guys and they're jumping on the back of a truck, geez, that sure looks like a landscaping business, but... What do you want to be doing about deliveries out? I think the building inspector is going to do that. No, I don't. But I, I think he can get a call and say they're out, they're out there right now at 9 o'clock. Tell them to stop. Okay. What if yeah. one of them wants to cut their lawn on Sunday? What? Fine. I didn't, I'm sorry. I didn't what if one of them wants to cut their lawn on Sunday? We're not, we're not regulating those residential residential use. It's a residential it's business, use. isn't it? Not if it's their no, own lawn. No, if they're, if they're mowing their own lawn, that's not a landscape We're not taking use. care of 25. Isn't that the, it, the, the house is that's, 24? That's... Cut out. I eight, but part of the land care yard goes goes over the 24 Forest Street lot line. So yes, it's included in the business. Had to look at the um, assessor's lots. So, if you've got landscaping vehicles going in and out, yes, I don't. I think having, I'm going to accept wood for a minute. Okay. Uh, so accepting wood for a minute. If you have landscaping vehicles going in and out from seven to six and nine to five, I think you could have deliveries going out during that time as well because I think for the most part it's the same vehicles right but they can't load them before seven they're not, right they're not which open. Is, you know if, if you're going to have your say that it didn't, it, it, yes, it, no, yeah, no, 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 it, but I'm just clarifying it, it so that we it all does. understand that if your vehicle is leaving at precisely at 7 a.m. in the morning at four o'clock you, last you, night yesterday yes you loaded it the previous night okay I you know it does all right. Just being in construction, I'm just thinking of the practicality of it. <laughs> I, want you, oh, I, I want you leave. I want you out of here by five past seven. Okay. Well, so why, then, why were you in here at six thirty? You told me you had to be out by five past seven. I had to put this on the truck. So then, let me clarify that deliveries in to the site will be from nine a.m. to two p.m. Not allowed on Monday through Friday. Deliveries out will be not allowed on Saturday. I mean, deliveries in will not be allowed on Saturday and Sunday. Deliveries out will be the same hours as loading and use of noisy equipment for the landscape business. So they'll be allowed out 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, and not allowed at all on Sunday. Is that what so they're gonna you're yeah, proposing? That makes okay. sense. All right. And yeah. then we have to talk about the firewood. Okay, now do we want to do the wood operation the same as or other does deliveries? The wood just fall under the same delivery? It does. Alex suggested that he wanted to potentially limit it. So Alex? That, get, that gets into the part of what the argument that Alex is making sometimes. What am I going to say? Lift up that thing. Is there any wood there? I mean, I'm fine with it saying the way it is. I'm Who's going to do that? that? Right. So Alex, what do you want to do about the deliveries out? I the want there to be a provision for the wood operation. Okay, what hours do you want I to see? want to hear other people's, I, I want suggestions actually okay. is what I want. I want to know what the applicant suggested. I have to go and look at, no, I, I, that was right. a rhetorical. Yes. Uh, but I, you know, if I knew that I was going to be asked what the wood operation hours should be, I would go, have gone back and looked to see what the applicant suggested. And I don't remember what it is. So I don't have an immediate suggestion now, but I do want hours for the wood operation specified. All right, so I'm going to put a line into the special permit. I will put in, what I'll do for now is I will put it the same as the deliveries out for the other time, but then I will also go back and look and see if we had any other information on that. All right, so the next section three, site plan approval. This oh, is just I, I would get rid of number four as suggested. I don't see any reason for it. Number four? No oh, business the business activity. I'm sorry, I was looking at the I next board. Yeah. You're done, then that's yeah. fine. I put it in for your review. All right, three, Roman numeral three, sorry, site plan approval. This is boilerplate language. Number four, zoning compliance and special permit requirements. The first thing under here is the purpose. And so I want to draw your attention to the zoning itself. It says the purpose of this subsection, this is one purpose under uh, 3N, the purpose of this subsection is to permit the ongoing operations of landscaping businesses. And there's a couple of qualifications it needs to meet. First, it has to be an operation on July 2012, which is fine, we've got that. It has to have existed on lots 
or on lots for at least one of which a special permit pursuant to Section 3A4 and or 6 or use variance was in force on July 2012. So I want to talk about that in a moment. And then the rest of purpose um, is actually what we've been trying to do. This subsection is intended to make the physical layout and day-to-day -day operations of each such landscaping business reasonably compatible with the interests of abutters and nearby residents and their rights to reasonable quiet and enjoyment of their properties. This subsection is intended to provide and require enforceable specifics for the layout and operations of each such landscaping business in order to control dust, noise, light, and odor, to promote safety, to reduce inconvenience to neighboring residents, and to establish reasonable limits on the amount of infrastructure, equipment, and operations. So that is obviously what we've been trying to do. That, that's the, um, that is the zoning. That's, that's the zo that is the zoning. Would there be anything wrong with just pasting that right in there? Yes. Under purpose? The, that part, that section part, we could put it right there in purpose if you want to. I have obviously changing it to this subsection to be this special permit. But I want to bring your attention to something else, and it's also under the, uh, the first paragraph. Um, we don't have a problem with the landscaping business being in operation in 2012. Um, we do have a question that has been raised about the special permit pursuant to sections 3A, 4, and or 6 or use variants uh, in force on July 2012. Uh, Thayer Nursery does not have any use variances, so that rules that one out. Um, 3A4 and or 6 um, in your zoning, the, that refers to the specific zoning sections. Um, 3A4 is actually allowed by right. You don't need a special permit to, to do the uses that are in 3A4. Um, 3A6 refers to accessory uses to something that is allowed by right. Actually, I'm going to read 3A4. So 3A is residence AA, A, B, and C district uses. Um, 3A4, I won't read all of the language because you've heard enough of me reading, but uh, 3A4A regard, uh, refers to agricultural, horticultural, floricultural use. Um, B is uh, on the five acres or less that came in later as an amendment. Both of those are as of right uses and don't require a special permit. Six is an accessory use on the same lot, which is either customarily incident to any of the above permitted uses, which is one through five, or to the uses permitted in accordance with um, subsection seven and that aren't detrimental to a residential neighborhood. Six, again, is an as of right use. You do not need a special permit for six. The special permit that the applicants have is under 7D, um, 3A7D. And that is the one that says a parcel of five acres or less, a greenhouse or nursery selling only produce raised on the premises, provided, however, that greenhouses and nurseries in single residence districts shall be permitted to sell only during the Christmas season, cut trees, Christmas trees, boughs, holly, and wreaths grown or fabricated elsewhere than on the premises. So what I am doing is I am letting you know that a question has arisen on this purpose and also on that first preamble that says that the applicant must, or the lot or lots, must have a special permit pursuant to 3A4 and or 6 and that, in fact, neither 3A4 nor 3A6 require a special permit. So you cannot, in fact, have a special permit for either of those. And I need to bring that to your attention to see if you wish to discuss it and how you wish to discuss it and what you want to do with it. I have been in contact with town council uh, to discuss this and see the level of importance we need to give to it. Um, and he's given me some options we can discuss, but I'd be interested in hearing any reaction from the board first. I'll give you my reaction. Yes. I've written it down. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows that section three, subsection N was intended to apply to their nursery. There was some poor draftsmanship in the article as a result of which some might claim that the article was a totally meaningless exercise since it had no potential application to anyone. Legislation is usually not interpreted so as to be meaningless. Fortunately, such an interpretation is not necessary. 
Subsection N has a saving provision through the reference to Section 3A6, which concerns accessory uses. The existing FARE 1967 and 1987 special permits specifically reference disallowance of a number of accessory uses. For example, the prohibition of parking on Hillside Street and Forest Street, the requirements for mufflers on bobcats and restrictions on their use, the prohibition of floodlights, and the restrictions on power washing of trucks. In the 1987 decision, the Board of Appeals specifically references 3A6 and reserved the right for further action under Section 3A6. Since the permit, in fact, addresses a number of accessory uses which are controlled by Section 3A6, it seems clear that the permit was issued in part pursuant to Section 3A6. This meets the specific requirements of the zoning, especially since the intent of the zoning enactment is so unmistakably clear, i.e., to permit there to apply for a permit. An unduly literal approach, which pays no attention to the purpose of the zoning and disregards the applicability of the permits to accessory uses, must be avoided. The zoning may be badly written, but it is good enough to qualify Thayer as an applicant for a landscaping business permit. The planning board should proceed on this basis. I disagree with that. Well, or I would not have brought it up. Your legal opinion is uh, worth something. My legal opinion is contrary to your legal opinion. My opinion as a member of the planning board who has reviewed the zoning and who has reviewed both the special permits and the decision, uh, I do not see in the actual um, special permit granted by the boards, by the Zoning Board of Appeals, I do not see a reference to 3A6. I bring it to your attention because it was brought to my attention and it is unfair for me to withhold information from the board that may affect your decision as you move through this. Brian. Um, I just, for the record, also spoke to town council about this issue, um, having seen it raised in the first draft um, that we've reviewed. I, um, practically speaking, have some serious concerns about this because uh, I think in addition to drafting an enforceable bylaw, or excuse me, enforceable special permit, I think we want to also be very careful to draft a special permit that will be able to uh, withstand an appeal. And I'm very concerned um, that if this thing goes into an appeal situation, this specific issue uh, with the zoning dr uh, drafting could potentially make the appeal last a lot longer than a simple um, appeal of, uh, of, a, of a typical decision. Um, you know, practically, with that in mind, and as I spoke, discussed with town council today, um, you know, an appeal with teeth could go on for years. Um, a denial of this special permit, which is very much uh, not in keeping with where I, where my head is at. Um, would allow the applicant to come back if town meeting were to, to correct this, either in a special town meeting or uh, at the May town meeting. Uh, that would be a substantial enough change that they could come back immediately to apply. And certainly there's been enough work and enough review of this permit that the, the approval could be given quickly. So from a practical standpoint, I'm concerned that um, we could actually be doing a disservice to the applicant by overlooking this. If we, if we if, if we follow that process that you just described, is it open up to public meeting again? They reapply? It's a new application? So we had, this actually came up uh, earlier in a discussion about the Hendry's project. If you remember, they'd gone for the 40B, and then there was some discussion back and forth uh, as to whether or not they would come back to us for a special permit for the mixed use. And um, I had said at the time, one of the members of the Board of Selectmen had been working on those discussions, and I'd said at the time, look, if they come in with a complete application, we do the application review, um, uh, I will 
be happy to hold a public hearing. All of the issues have already gone through. I'll be happy to hold a one-night public hearing, and we can go from there. I mean, the, the work that we've done now would get us to a substantial draft. Yes, we would have to hold another. There would have to be another application. Um, so the, what the process would be is there would be either a special, town per, a special town meeting or an annual town meeting. The zoning would get corrected. Um, then we would have the, a new application, which would be substantially based on the old one. Just a quick clarification. Could that permit. application actually include the special permit draft? Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay. I mean, that would be fair enough. We'd have a, we would have a public hearing. It would be reopened to the public for comment. And actually, in some ways, that would be good because the uh, public would have the draft in front of them to could comment directly on that. And then we could do it in one, maybe two nights at most. But I would say one night. That, would that be uh, grounds for an appeal? I mean, of course, I, it could I, be appeal. I, I mean, Everything. Yeah. Could no, be no, appealed, no. But yes. I know, of course. But I mean, yeah. realistic. Yeah. You know, here you, you submit an application. You went through it for a year. Now you're going to tell me you're going to submit a similar application. You're going to go through it one night. So the. I mean, you the, and I know the understanding right. behind it, but still, there's the public that yeah. says that this is a different application now. It should it should merit the same time and in, in scrutiny well, that the other one did. Having said that, there are there are many towns who go through their special permit applications a lot faster than a year, but um, that's neither here nor there. Um, the fact of changing the zoning would allow, so if, normally if we denied a special permit for many applicant, there would be a two-year waiting period before they could reapply. But the, if the town meeting voted to change the zoning, that would open up the ability to um, reapply earlier based on the fact that the zoning was materially changed. Um, so if, if, in our opinion, this is a material change and this is a direction that we want to go to, I did, because that is, having a special town meeting is one of our options, I did take the precaution of putting myself on the selectman's agenda for Monday night to request a special town meeting if that is the direction the board would go in because it makes it a lot faster process the faster I get in front of the Board of Selectmen. Would that yeah. be for this coming town meeting? No, it's too late. It was, unfortunately, it was too late when we, when this was brought to my attention to put a special town meeting within the town meeting because of the noticing requirements for a special town meeting. So my guess is the earliest it would be given the holidays is January. So, Brian. Um. This is, a, this is a question you may not be able to answer um, on process, but is there an ability to reference public record from a previous application in a new application? I think we probably could so that um, we could refer to the, the materials that had already been submitted. Certainly when we reopened the public hearing, they submitted for in March, they submitted a new application and we referred to the previous public hearing. We just sort of said, look, we'll take everything that was there. If there's been a several month period in between, I'm not sure that we could do that in quite the same way. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we would have a draft special permit that the public could specifically comment on, um, again, one, maybe two nights. I don't think we would have to, to spend that same amount of time. I assume I mean, all the same material could be submitted on They could su submit all the basis. same material. Yeah, absolutely. And the updated plans that they would have to do anyway. Mm -hmm. so. I, I think uh, what Alex described earlier, I think, I mean, to take it to an extreme just to make my point, I mean, if we spelled something wrong in it to say, well, you can't give them the permit then because you spelled it wrong, you, you, you're weighing that against the entire intent of something. I, I think that's, and I think, you know, like the Constitution, expedient trial, I mean, I think the applicant should almost have the ability to have some input here because, I mean, they're just asking for a decision. If I had thought it was at the level of the typo, I wouldn't have mentioned it. Um, I thought it was substantial enough to bring to the board's attention. I think, um, the, I think the intent of the. Uh, yeah, the intent is certainly something that's out there. Significantly. Yeah. I, my concern on, sorry, Alex. My, my intent on the, my concern about intent on in, in the matter is, the the court could very well side with the intent and go forward with that. If it does not, it could take three years to get to that decision. And if the court overrules the app, the, the the permit, there's still two more years on top of that. They have to wait to refile. Uh, I would point out that if this goes to another town meeting, if we tell Thayer, 
go make business plans, alternative business plans for the next X amount of time uh, to conduct your landscape business someplace other than your nursery yard. Uh, and this has to go probably to the annual town meeting and then it goes to the attorney general for approval which takes three or four months and then they have to file an application and I certainly, I mean, I'm not going to hash out a special permit if it's for nothing, just for their application. Um, we've yeah. begun to discuss this special permit but we've gotten haven't gotten into any of the uh, so-called conditions yet, and there are plenty of comments I have on those. So there is hardly anything that could be attached to a special permit application. Uh, people will have a right to comment, and then we'll be back where we are probably a year from now. And uh, I think that uh, there can't wait that that sort of time. And even if it did, once we issue the permit, it still can be appealed. And I personally think that this is not a very good appellate issue for someone challenging the permit. It is, uh, uh, it's an issue. It's an arguable issue. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, if there were asked whether or not they were willing to take the chance, uh, fine, ask them. Uh, but uh, uh, I was involved in uh, uh, this zoning and I know what the intent was and uh, I am very comfortable with the fact that it is partially based on the accessory uses, the disallowance of accessory uses. Um, it's, in my view, it's a, a, this is something that if the board were to uh, uh, tell Thayer to get lost, uh, they would be making a huge mistake and it would be a huge disservice to the town. I think to categorize it as telling Thayer to get lost is a mischaracterization. I would, I would let me, agree. Let me, uh, let me yes. think through a scenario. If we move forward with this, and it's appealed, mm -hmm. and it takes a year, and in the meantime, they've got their permit, and in the meantime, we amend at a future town meeting the bylaw, mm -hmm. and then sometime thereafter, the court comes back and says uh, the permit's denied because of the appeal. Why can't their nursery come back the next day and reappeal? I uh, reapply. Why can't Under they? the new zoning. Under the new zoning. Yep. That is you, certainly you, an option. You move the target. It's a new thing. I can write back to apply. So it's, it probably it's doesn't. A, it's, but the, the bottom line is it's, it's really unfair to the applicant. It's, it's like throwing a guy in jail. Like, like, I like scenarios to make my points, but it's like throwing a guy in jail and say, well, you, we're going to give you a trial. Well, when are you going to give me the trial? Well, we'll get back to you on that. That, that <laughs> is certainly a possibility, is that you could, the, the board could rather, uh, go ahead and vote to approve the special permit and then in the meantime move to correct um, the issue. By the time an appeal comes in, if that appeal is denied, or if, if that appeal is upheld and, and theirs permit is denied, they would be able to come in because it was new zoning or corrected zoning and reapply. That would certainly be an option. I think that makes good sense yeah, for, the best for the reasons that people have discussed. The purpose, I think, and intent was pretty clear at town meeting. Uh, there was overwhelming support uh, that this has been raised as a potential, what I view as sort of a technical, mm -hmm. um, maybe misunderstanding or mistake, but that you would just, uh, that the impact it could have on, on the business by another year's delay would be significant. And it, it goes completely against the intent to have that kind of impact, I believe. So I think Mike's su suggestion is uh, is a very good one. We'd like to hear from the applicant. Yeah. Does everybody else wish to hear from the applicant? Yes. yes. In that case, Ned, could you and you come forward, or you and Josh and I come forward? Thank you, uh, Ned Corcoran, on behalf of 
the applicants with Josh and Maggie Oldfield, I agree four square A with everything that Alex just said. There's no question there's going to be an appeal of this permit. There's already been an appeal of the town meeting action to establish the bylaw. There have been appeals of every, every permit, every decision, both ways there'll be more appeals. So it's an issue of appeal. And it is clearly um, arguable enough that it is a winnable argument on appeal, just as it may be a losable argu argument on appeal. I think the board would do an extraordinary disservice to the town. It would slap town meeting in the face if it was to decide on a technical issue that it didn't have the authority to issue uh, this permit. I think the clear and best approach is what Mike suggested and what um, uh, Cheryl has agreed is to go forward if the board is inclined to finish the negotiations on the special permit and grant the permit and allow um, the process to unfold at town meeting to, to correct. There may be other issues in this permit that get raised on appeal that ought also to be corrected um, because the, the clear, at the end of the day, the clear intent of town meeting was to allow this, this business to operate. They wanted to operate and behave uh, and have re stricter guidelines about how they were operating. But the clear intent, overwhelming intent, I, I said it early on, a thousand to three. You know, you needed a two-thirds vote. And it is highly unusual, as Brian Walsh said, for there not to be a standing vote if there's any voice vote for no. And there was no standing vote. Um, I think the precinct voted loud and clear when they voted to elect Maggie as a member of town meeting. She was the highest vote getter. And they voted loud and clear not to elect Phil Johanning in that same election as a member of town meeting. There's overwhelming support. And I think the board owes the town the obligation to finish this business, to issue the permit, to establish the conditions, and if there are issues like this and others that need to be corrected, they ought to be given the opportunity to be corrected at a future town meeting. And that would correct any deficiency that might exist with respect to any appeal. Um, so Mike's discussion or, or proposal to move forward and then at the same time correct it to a special town meeting is one that you would endorse? Absolutely. we have to make that decision right now? No. No, not at all. Because we're still going through some of the conditions. So we can, you know, we'll probably, with luck, finish up on the 5th. So, but you do not have to make that decision right now. Brian? Um, I just want to address what was, was just said. I, I just want to make clear, uh, first of all, I, I don't think anyone's questioning the intent. I think everyone is sitting here acknowledging it. Um, and. Uh, I think <laughs> this board has worked very hard to honor that intent. Uh, so to imply otherwise, and I'm not insinuating that you did, but to imply otherwise would be a disservice to this board. Um, I just feel like uh, we need some basis upon which to move forward. So if we could have Alex's language reviewed by town council. Town council has reviewed Alex's okay. language. I gave it to him this morning. Thank you. Um, I would just like some sort of language to, uh, upon which we can have something referenced about this and, and uh, I have an email from town council giving out the two possible options that the board could take and uh, the implications of both options, which I will hand out to you in a moment. Okay. Josh, you had your hand up? Yes. Um, I just have two questions. Yeah. Um, first of all, why are we dealing with this now? Yeah. The last minute that's my question number one when obviously it was no number two is um, is it going to take the three month period again from the AG's office that's a concern yeah and number three is I don't know if we can afford it mm -hmm. so those are my three concerns it's just frustrating as an applicant that we've gone through this whole process and expenditure of money imposition on us and all the other BS that we've gone through to find out now at the 12th hour. So that's a, a, a very valid point. Um, I don't disagree with any of 
your frustration. I think it's frustrating for anybody who is put into this situation. It's certainly not where I would have wanted to be at this stage in the process. Um, it's brought up now because we're at the point of the findings. I actually found out, or it was brought to my attention, just before the, well, fairly soon before the last night of the public hearing. It is not a public hearing matter in that it is relevant to the board's own findings. It's not relevant to what you are proposing. I have been working with town council. I've actually spoken to Alex. I've spoken to Ned, back to town council, trying to figure out what the different options were, um, what, the, what actions the board could take, and what those implications were. Um, it didn't make sense to bring it up until I had an idea of what those were, and I have been looking at every possibility um, in talking to town council to see what the others are. Uh, I am deeply aware of the intent of town meeting and in bringing this issue up, it is not my, well, it's not where I would have wanted to be with this. Um, but I do recognize that because it's there, it uh, this question impacts the decision that the board has to make and it's not fair to keep it from the board. It also, of course, as with anything else that comes before the board, it can be appealed and it impacts the appeal. And for that reason, it impacts the town. And as chair of the planning board, I have a duty to both the other members of the board and to the town as a whole to bring forward anything like this that's brought to my attention. Yeah, I'm not questioning Yeah, that. and I know you're not, but I just yeah. want to make this clear. I understand it is difficult for you, and that's why we brought you forward to talk with this. Well, I think you guys have known about this. How long ago was the last public hearing? How it's, many weeks ago? It would be about, this is three in, so it would be two weeks back, four weeks back so would be the last one. Ago. Yeah, sure, I know. So four weeks ago, yep. you knew about this. Mm -hmm. And when did we learn about this? Well, I learned about it four weeks ago. Yeah. So when did we learn about this? When I talked to you about it. Yes. Today. I know. Today. I would so just you hang on, sorry. Charles. You just what my comments sorry. would be. Yes. That's just saying. My comments would be totally X-rated at this moment, <laughs> at every single one of you, for allowing this to happen. You should not blame the other members of the board. They did not know until this week, when the first draft went out. The only other person that knew besides Alex, Ned, and myself, the town council, and the town administrator, because if there's any element that requires potential, that affects potential litigation, it's my duty to inform them. And I, I understand that your comments would be X-rated. I do and not dispute that. This also affects some other decisions that we have made with the town. In other BS decisions by the building inspector. So we, made commitments to the town in court based on this. So now what do we do? We move forward. Cheryl wanted to speak. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I'd you like to find a mistake was made. Yeah. And was the timing Maybe. bad? It's a mistake. It's not your mistake. Right. We move forward. Do we deserve to know earlier? Oh, I, just, I can't answer that. I don't, I don't think it was a mistake. It was uh, no, I'm just saying, okay, should we have been known earlier that this was a problem? I'd, I'd like to say yes, yes, All, all of you, hold on. Cheryl's oh, been waiting okay. for some time to speak. Cheryl, speak, and then let's move forward. I, I mean, I'd just like to say I think everyone, um, this I just learned about a day or two ago and been trying to understand the, the question and the issue. And even whether I'm allowed to deliberate, you are allowed uh, to which deliberate. We that did has been get confirmed. clarification yes. from town council on. But what I would like to say here is uh, that um, what Mike has suggested, I'd like to have a, a, us agree on a path forward. Uh, we can't erase what's been done, and we we need to find a path forward. And I think what Mike's suggestion and Ned supports, I think we should talk to town council about that. And if that's not one of the options that he presented to you, ask him why that's not a good option. And then if necessary, do we need another opinion uh, other than town council? I mean, Alex is an attorney, Ned's an attorney, they have their opinions about this. Do we need someone else's opinion? Uh, because it has such significance. I mean, I think what's been suggested um, uh, that could delay and have significant cost to the applicant is not something we should take lightly. Yep. Just like um, having something which it might 
be a problem on appeal. I mean, as we understand, any decision can get appealed. Mm -hmm. So that we're going to give that more weight than the significant impact on the applicant, I don't think is right. The, uh, and I just, I just, I don't want to waste the time, but I, I kept saying that we, we need to move forward relative to the applicant. It's not, it's unfair mm -hmm. them to just keep the skull on and go and go and go and go. But I think, in not to jump on with their attorney, but I agree that we owe it to the town of Milton. The town of Milton, the town meeting, decided that they should have the right to apply for this permit and that we should be the deliberating body to make a decision on whether they should get it or not. So we owe it to the people of Milton, the town of Milton, the, the media's, uh, town meeting members to make it happen. And, and, and it's been said by multiple people multiple times. There's probably something else in here you could appeal on too, so. So you're comfortable moving, yes, Ned, you want to speak, uh, uh, if yeah, you're comfortable. I, Moving forward, I'm, yeah. I am, and I know we have to speak about those options. But yes. to speak specifically to Cheryl's suggestion about another opinion, at the end of the day, the only other, the only opinion that is going to matter is the opinion of the appeals court, because they're going to hear from both sides, from multiple sides, over the next several years on an appeal. So. That's the, that's the only opinion that's going to matter. It doesn't matter whether Alex, because Alex and I can be on one side agreeing. You know, we know that uh, a Butters Council is going to be on another side uh, with his own opinion. That's going to all take time to filter through the court system. We know there's going to be an appeal. So I think the most expeditious and the most appropriate use of available resources, including the enormous expenditure of resources that their nursery and the Oldfield family has gone through is to finish the job. Decide on the merits of the application, whether you should grant or deny a permit. If, if on the merits you want to grant the permit, grant the permit with the conditions that you determine. And then it gets appealed. And whatever happens in the interim of the appeal, including moving forward with technical corrections to the zoning, um, can happen maybe obviate whatever appeal may, may happen. To, to, to hopefully put you maybe in a better frame of mind, I, I think if we move forward, we make a decision, this thing should be appealed, and the appeal be held up and they deny the permit, I, I think we would owe you what, an expedient reapplication. Brian, you had a comment? Because it would be a no, no fault of your own. I just want a path. Okay. So, so then, you have so, two options, I want to hear what they are. All right, so well, our, our two options is uh, the first possible vote is a grant of a special permit with conditions, exactly what we've just been talking about. That is option number one. Um, and uh, obviously, the, if the special permit would to be appealed, the issues would include what town meeting had intended to do, clearly intended to uh, refer to um, section 3A7 rather than 3A4 or 6. And I'll give you this language, I'm paraphrasing. Second possible vote would be a denial of the application. Basis of the denial would be perhaps the, um, the uncertainty of 3A, uh, the, the question that I've raised, 3A, 4, and 6. So um, in either event, town council says that 3 uh, in should be amended at a future town meeting. So if you want a path forward, I think the, the initial, I think you've got two options. You could deny it right now. I think what I'm hearing from everybody is that you're not sensing that that is fair to the applicant or to town meeting. And uh, certainly given the amount of time and energy the applicant has put in, uh, we've put in, that town meeting put in and looking at this, um, denial is, it's a hard vote. Um, your other path is, our other path as the board is to grant the special permit and um, make the changes. One possibility is, as has been presented, is that appeals take quite some time. And it may well be by the time the appeal actually even gets to the court, it's already been corrected by the special permit, and that can be noted. So you had a, a uh, I, I think hearing the two options was helpful. And, and for me, um, the reason why is because I think the question has been, uh, how does this survive in my mind? The question has been for me, how do we create something that 
will have legs to withstand an appeal, okay? By hearing your two options, what I heard in your second option was uh, my missing piece, which is the uh, how does it survive an appeal in the other direction? How does this board deny a permit mm -hmm. that would be uh, able to sustain an ap appeal from the applicant to suggest that it shouldn't have been appealed? And I think the very fact that we can rely on the intent from that standpoint, knowing that the intent would be a strong defense mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the applicant's favor on an appeal, um, that for me gives me the path to say, you know, as much as intent is the secondary way I'd like to do this, I think the intent was clear. I think most people in this room are acknowledging that, and mm -hmm. um, it gives me a great deal of comfort. So there are four of us that would need to vote on this going forward, and what I'd like to know is if all four of you, uh, well, all three of you plus me are comfortable moving ahead with the special permit process that we've been doing. Brian, I think you've just indicated yes. Mike, you've indicated yes. yes. Alex, you're comfortable moving I'm forward I'm comfortable with going permit. forward with it, but I do say that the special permit will have to contain a very significant defense of our position because yes. it has been raised and uh, 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 we have to be comfortable that we're going forward because, uh, uh, because we have the right to go forward. That's, and couldn't, I couldn't have said it better. And I, and I want to clarify, again, I'm not asking whether or not you're voting in favor of the special permits because we haven't finished going through the conditions. And as Ned pointed out, we need to make our decision on the merits of it. But I am asking if you are comfortable moving forward with the, with the process that we've established mm -hmm. with the special permit. All right. Then if the three of you are comfortable moving forward, then I am also comfortable moving forward with what we have now. I have suggested language. Uh, for the zoning amendment, and I specifically request that you do not ask that section six be stricken from the from subsection N because uh, that would undermine the process in a uh, major way. You can simply change the one number and strike paragraph K. Um, and so that we'll will do it. I, I, I submitted language and uh, I, I, I really don't uh, uh, want to see the whole thing. Uh, uh, so then when we get to that point, we'll review it and... and I understand, but if, you, yeah, if yeah, you, understand. you want to go over to the selectmen on Monday, I, yes. I suggest that... Uh, I can tell them we already have language, we'll review it, but we are ready to move forward as soon as we can. And on the path of correcting it, yeah. is it advisable for... I guess I'll let Nick Corcoran deal with whether it's advisable for them to modify well, the special well, permit once the... Part of it is a clear mistake. Just I agree. The, the I one, agree and, and so correcting that one number is fine, but uh, um, it isn't what we're relying on. There, fine. So... We well, it is in the sense that it was a clearly a mistake, but uh, all right. So it's twenty-five a, uh, past not ten. Not a material mistake. It's well, twenty-five we're past on ten. Intent guys, and then a fallback position. guys, I'm listening. Hold on. It is twenty-five past ten. I think you have our answer. We are moving forward with the special permit process. Um, Sorry about that. Very. And then we will continue on November fifth with our deliberations. Ned um, will need the plans, the most up-to-date plans. And I'm happy that. to discuss my specific comments. And as you can see, they are <laughs> extensive, I just extensive on every page. Uh, I'm happy Would to discuss you... them. I can't write them up. No, you don't have to write them up. But can you give them to um, the, can anybody with comments on this draft that is before you now give them, whether in written or typed form, to Tim and Julia for further distribution. And that would include you and your clients as well. Any comments that you have, get them over to Tim. Two of you, please collect them and distribute them to everybody. And yes, you can comment too, <laughs> just to let you know. No, um, I know that wasn't your question, but I'm just letting you know you can you No, can I would just like to, um, if we're going to get um, revised or the most up-to-date plans from Ned, um, if there were things that about the operations, the et cetera, that we, if they made sense to refer to those rather than put everything in the in the 
Uh, Everything body. either has to be in the special permit or in an appendix. Right. So you can't so, refer back to the application. Okay, so then the, ap that. the appendix, if it makes sense to put some of that in an appendix, like as one an operation. One of the things that we did that I prepared was for one page written descriptive plans. This is yeah. the, the restatement. The restatement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the we June, drew from that. The June 15th restatement. I, mean, I, I, thought that was, I thought that was the best way to be responsive to the zoning, which was you had to describe how you would mitigate noise, dust, this. So the then let's pull operate. that in and add it in. I mean, the only thing to be careful of is to make sure that we're not referring wholesale to a document that has, for instance, hours that right. have been changed. No, I was thinking we'd pull in those paragraphs. I mean, I know we pulled in the, the provisions at various mm -hmm. points, but I don't know that we pulled in the specific paragraphs, so let's have another look at that. So, All right, next meeting, November. F oh, did you want to? Uh, I had one other agenda. Did that make it onto the agenda? It did. Oh, it did? Okay, I didn't get the, exactly. I think you probably sent it over, but it's mixed up. I'm sorry, yes, you do have one more agenda item. The other client has been here. Patiently. Patiently. At one point, it might come in ahead of this, but that might was my fault. You should have done the the wave. I apologize. I'm here with Jerry Conley, who is purchasing the property. That's right. Just note for the record, Charles refused. So I'm here with Jerry Conley, who's purchasing the property at 475 Adams Street. It's the old red house that is across from the Blue Hills Bank. And it's sort of an interesting piece of property. It is property with a history of pre-existing nonconformity. It was historically doctor's offices with residents and operated as such under special permits that were continued for periods of time. Um, that use has lapsed. Uh, about a year ago, uh, the current owner, who's Tom O'Neill, sought a permit to put a real estate office and, and some other small offices in the building, started a hearing with the Board of Appeals, and withdrew the application. Um, he is now sold or selling to the Conleys, and the Conleys are proposing a new use, and I've shown you a, a provided a, um, a rendering of what that new use would be. It would be two, uh, a, a building that would have two small offices on the first floor, two, uh, two uh, bedroom apartments on the second floor. Um, it requires, at a minimum, a special permit, a new special permit from the Board of Appeals, and it would require site plan approval from this board. It may require variances. We have not yet submitted a specific application to uh, the, the Zoning Commissioner um, with respect to that. Uh, but we have conducted two neighbor meetings, the most recent one being last evening, to talk about this proposed use in a, in a draft of a site plan that would, that would sort of set the building against the street, use the existing driveway in and out, and provides parking, at least under the zoning for the combination of uses today, of 12 parking spaces. We think perhaps a fewer number might be allowable, and we have to look carefully at that. Um, there is still some angst about doing anything other than a single family lot here. At a minimum, we know that we can cut the lot in half because it is more than 15,000 square feet, has more than 150 feet of frontage, so we can create two um, conforming lots and put buildings on in a sort of a odd way, two driveways and impact to traffic would be potentially significant with respect to that. Um, we could do um, uh, other uses allowed under state zoning law, such as um, daycare, preschool, um, and we know that there is significant interest for preschool and daycare at this location, but that's a pretty intensive use from a traffic and use perspective, so we're not proposing to do that. We're not proposing to put two single-family dwellings here. We're not proposing at the moment to think about a more dense uh, residential use, which could go here. What we're really thinking about is how this property fits that sort of street front, mm -hmm. which has a church, this property, the Jubinville building, which is a law office, and this can be seen in this rendering. Um, 
sort of to the left. In fact, the, there was carefully, the preliminary designs sort of fairly carefully mirrors that and gives it that same appearance. And then the post office. And across the street, the Blue Hills Bank. And a fairly wide three lane, four lane of traffic, which really prohibits sort of pedestrian crossing or other crossings for purposes of just moving back and forth. It's a low traffic generator. We're proposing to limit the type of office use to uses where, such as law offices, uh, accounting offices, real estate offices, where the predominant level of effort is individuals working in the office but meeting clients elsewhere. Not a doctor's office, not a chiropractor office, not a rehab facility where the predominant use is the client coming to the site and churning traffic through the day. So that's the proposal. We wanted to have a preliminary presentation any for initial gut reactions to whether what's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, we know that we do need to be before uh, both boards. We're going to the Historical Commission on the 9th because it is also historical. We'll be here for two, two reasons that night, uh, but I'll be with the Historical Commission at 7, uh, talking about uh, the building. It is much older than 1919. It does have some historic uh, significance, uh, but it's really in tough shape uh, and not likely to be saved. We, the Jerry's already filed the demolition permit and to trigger that process with the Historical Commission. So given that, uh, we're open to any thought, initial thoughts and uh, questions and concerns as we, as we get into sort of the final throes of initial planning uh, as we begin to prepare plans for the uh, Questions from board members? Well, it would certainly shield the neighborhood from the Blue Hill Bank. What's interesting about the site is that this doesn't show topography, but it actually comes up towards the back. It's about a two or three foot change in grade. Right. So you can sit this down a little bit and really berm up the rear, proposing a six foot wood stockade fence. In fact, we're getting into some direct discussions with the neighbors. There's a two family immediately behind. So the discussion with them about what's the best way you know, to cite this, do we move this a little bit this way, tighten the parking up in here, uh, the berming and the, and the plantings and the fencing, uh, are they adequate to do what's, uh, what's necessary? But that's a, obviously a direct um, issue and the Conleys and, and those neighbors are meeting um, to discuss what's the best way to treat this piece of the property. Um, but I think it, from the town's perspective, um, generates a little bit of new commercial tax revenue. Um, it's, it is low impact. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's a net gain to the neighborhood and the, and the town with the approach that's, that we're taking. I, uh, I do like the um, emphasis on integrating it in with the rest of the neighborhood, the same type, same style of building in many ways, the same colors, the same roof treatments. Um, uh, bringing it forward so it's addressing the street rather than setting it back on the lot. I do appreciate those. Other comments from board members? Well, the, the public, of course, if you can get the uh, neighbors on board, yeah. um, I think you can get the planning board on board. Yeah. And to the point of the width of the street, I mean, that particular area, as you know, is very highly trafficked. It's uh, hard to imagine a family in, in that with the kids coming out um, in that particular area, and you do have those other uses, uh, commercial uses on either side, so. Yeah, if, in, if you're putting single family houses, you're, you're inviting families with kids. If you have. I don't have a problem with families with kids, I but I you don't know either, that but, street but is, uh, that's is right. an issue right. But the churn, yes. and the, yeah. the, you've got two, and one of the interesting mm -hmm. things is that the island mm -hmm. that feeds the, the overpass, yeah. Wood Street coming across, is approximately here. Yeah. You can make the left and cross comfortably into this driveway, do it fairly frequently. If, if, the, if there's a driveway here, now they have to make a right and they're gonna turn into St. Agatha Road or they're gonna turn into the church or they're gonna go down and around and come back in. Right. It, it creates traffic 
that ought not to be there. Right. And that, that island can already be fairly tricky. So um, having met some people going the wrong way um, <laughs> uh, past the island just as you're trying to turn, not expecting somebody to be there. Um, anything else from board members? All right, well, in that case, we look forward time. to coming back. And thank you, and thank you for your patience. We appreciate it. So. So we have two zoning items on the agenda. I am guessing there's not a whole heck of a lot of um, appetite for zoning items I at think the moment. That, you so know, I'd accept that. We've discussed them, haven't we? I mean, the the Ned was the one who asked for the uh, the the use thing, and if he's happy with uh, not pursuing it, why should we uh, care? Well, it's not, I'm not saying we're not pursuing it. I'm just saying we're not necessarily pursuing it tonight. So. Oh, okay. I, I mean, but why, I was, I was should, why should we pursue it at town meeting? Well, I think it's, it's still on our list. Uh, we had a, a question. We did recommend we had, that the town meeting pass it, and we would have to, presumably, to keep you from going up and, uh, uh, and justifying it, um, rescind our vote. Or change our vote, revise our, our vote. vote. Revise our vote to accept the town meeting's um, recommendation, which we will discuss on Monday. But my point was not to talk about it for Monday. My point was to talk about it for submission in January. Because if you remember, one of the, que one of the many questions that came up as we were addressing nonconforming buildings, Marion brought up the issue of nonconforming lots. The building that. inspector apparently brought up another issue. And right. so the question is, if we're getting it ready for January, how do we want to deal with it? It wasn't meant to talk about it for oh. Monday night. So, I'm, um, but we do need to have that on the agenda. To I have no idea what Marion is getting at. So this is why I need to pull in the notes that she sent me and get it to everybody. And I am suggesting that I would look for a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. <laughs> Gosh, that's a non-debatable motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Fabulous. Aye, aye.